Tuesday night, we are back at it again. <laughs> Finally getting back to the nightlife campaign we started. Tuesday. So Tuesday, Tuesday, Tuesday. Tuesday. Okay, so <laughs> tonight we are playing nightlife. Thank you, Jim. Uh, well, you saw the cover in the video, probably, very beginning. Uh, nightlife is a game. We started it in the first chapter of this story three weeks ago. I think two or three weeks ago. ago, Yeah. Yeah. And we're continuing the same storyline, but the game itself for anybody who missed that, it's by stellar games, uh, which is now defunct, but, uh, nightlife is, it came out a year before the white wolf games, but in this game you play vampires, werewolves, demons, ghosts, all that kind of stuff. Whereas I always describe it as World of Darkness, the old Vampire the Masquerade, Werewolf the Apocalypse, especially Second Edition, which came out a year after this. Yeah, imagine that is like Anne Rice novels. This is more like Return of the Living Dead, the humorous zombie movie that's like super fast paced with a heavy metal soundtrack. This is splatterpunk. Mm -hmm. So it takes itself a lot less seriously, but it's still big on action, big on gore, big (laughs) on monsters. So, of course, I love it, being a monster geek. So tonight we are playing Nightlife. Uh, The game is set in 1990s, probably around 1992, 1993, which is where we left off when we played this originally. Uh, Me, Mike, and Brad and some other people played Nightlife years and years and years ago. And uh, we kind of stopped, and then we brought it back with the new group. So they've made characters. So uh, Mike was running it, so he has a new character. And then Brad and I are actually playing the characters from 1992 Mm -hmm. and continuing it in the same decade. Uh, It takes place in Chicago. So They do live forever. Yeah, they do. Who knows? Maybe you'll go to sleep and wake up in 2020 and be like, why am I wearing a mask again? (laughs) So yeah, basically it's uh, Chicago around 1992, and uh, we play the kin, which are the crazy monsters living among the humans, Um, and we all have kind of, well, our own personalities and stuff, but it does have kind of a splatterpunk, evil dead meets return of the living dead kind of sense of humor to it sometimes. Um, There are sorcerers, there are are mages, wizards, uh, witches. All kinds of stuff. lions and tigers and bears. Oh my! Mm-hmm. Yeah. So uh, I don't know if you want to do a quick character intro. So just to catch everybody up. Okay. So who wants to start? Mike, you want to start? Oh, Wade, you want to start? So my character is Manny. 
He's a mannequin. He's originally from the southern French coast in Versailles and from about the 30s or 40s. And he's a um, an animate. So he's a animated mannequin. The, he was big into smuggling in Versailles, but then he ended up got a little too much trouble, so he moved to Chicago. Always a good place to hide. Yeah. Okay. My character is Studebaker Rex. He is an inanimate also. Uh, he was built in his mechanic friend's garage with <laughs> love of the mechanic who was a sculptor also and when the mechanic died it infused him with some sort of power and he came to life and now he runs around doing all the things that this dude wants <laughs> <laughs> yeah animates are animated whatever like an animated mannequin an animated statue of car parts uh you have flesh animates like dude. frankenstein <laughs> the dude abides yeah <laughs> you have all kinds of stuff. Stone animates can be gargoyles, that kind of thing. So, and you guys drain life force right. to keep yourself going. Right. I have a, I have a pigeon coop. Yeah. That's Homer, right. Homer, Homer, homing pigeons. Yeah. Uh, I'm playing Adrian Vasari. Uh, he's a classic vampire, uh, really from Italy in the 1500s. And then he kind of took a dirt nap. And he ended up waking up in like the 1970s and where he moved to. Uh, Left Italy, went to America, and kind of uh, gained in growth with all the technology and stuff and the changes, and that's kind of who he is. And my sorcerer is um, Wayne Walworth the Third, affectionately known simply as Wally. Wally. And. Uh, He's a sorcerer. He's uh, the closest <laughs> thing to actual human, but he's still kin, and he's still got access to powers and everything. Uh, but it takes a, a part of his life force to run any of it or use any of his actual spells, which he has to learn. And so to rebuild that life force, he's got a, a chickens up on the top of the brownstone that uh, he uh, rents the uh, top floor and roof from one of the Crowleys. <laughs> and um, so he butchers chickens to put back his life for it a little bit of that overnight. Uh, he has a, 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 war, a, a warrant, a, a, a teenager girl that is um, highly on the empathic side. Uh, who they had rescued in their first story life. She kind of lives with him, and he kind of teaches her, and some of the other coterie teaches her other stuff. Okay. So far in the chat, we've got Jamie Marshall, who said, Great intro, guys. Cool. Thank you. Cliff Thank Lover. You, hey, Cliff. Says, Happy gaming, friends. I miss you all, and I promise the pictures will be in the mail. <laughs> okay. Are they blackmail pictures? Yeah. We no, made? him. Oh, of him? Yeah, oh, awesome. Just, yeah. Oh, sweet. Oh, well, I mean, we do have an OnlyFans site. Yeah. Yeah. not ask him. He just wants to. I'm afraid to get Cliff's pictures. I see him, like, with his butt out and bunny ears, like, doing a pin-up <laughs> play on a stove, but with a Warhammer good. axe. Right. And yeah, Chris, yeah, Chris, Chris, gonna send us. And Chris Farson has dropped in. He said, good evening, people. Hey, hey Chris. Hey, good evening. Good evening. Hello. Uh, and I play Shiro. Look at Shiro. Yes. I play Shiro Hibachi. And uh, he is a samurai from the 1200s during the whole uh, that period. Uh, he was killed <clears throat> by a show right with one of the shoguns. And when he tried to fight back, he was a so he was a samurai. Then he became a healer, following his father's path. And then uh, he got forced back into the life of the samurai. And attribution for his actions. Well, basically, they went and killed his village and his family. He went after the Shogun. He was killed, but he came back as a vengeful spirit. Still was able to go and kill the, the, the Shogun at that time of that district. Uh, but the monks basically gathered up the parts that he was... Because the ghost has his spirit attached to something. So it was his part of his armor and his swords. So they sealed him in a lead box, or iron box. And he was trapped there for 
till basically the 1990s when he was on Earth, and then he was shipped for an exhibit in Chicago in one of the hospitals there, and the armor is there, and now he kind of haunts the halls, heals the people, and scares the not-so-sick people <laughs> so they are sick. So anyway, that's what he does, and he's kind of a healer, kind of a killer, so he kind of tries to keep everything balanced, you know? Yeah. But I feel bad because it's like higher <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so do do I scare you? Yeah. <laughs> yes. All right. Why? <laughs> Here it goes. <laughs> That's my. All right. And uh, I play Gideon tonight. I'm running the game, but when somebody else is running it, usually Mike. I play Gideon. He is a white. Uh, they are basically. It says in the book they were. Somebody called him a mummy without their ace bandages, and they strangled him with his ace bandage. But that's basically what they are. They are gaunt, very pale creatures, uh, kind of descended from the whites that guarded ancient burial mounds in Europe. You know, I really see them as Beetlejuices, almost. Yeah, sort yeah. of. Beetlejuice could be considered a white, right. really. With a high humanity. Yeah, yeah. If, if he was tangible, that's what he would do. Mm -hmm. So uh, Gideon is basically a punk. Like, you guys have been around for thousands of years. Uh, he was probably born in... 1973 <laughs> and he was attacked by a white and drained and infected so now he is a white uh he usually steals cars and sometimes works as a police pizza delivery driver to get money pizza, pizza delivery pizza delivery and he drains by youth so all he's got to do is grab you and drain your youth so he usually delivers pizza and then grabs the person ages and here's your change enough. here's your yeah. change <laughs> So uh, I have two more books left. <laughs> <laughs> he's basically just a punk rocker. I mean, that's what he is. He's like into speed metal and and you know listens to Anthrax and all that stuff. So he's basically a typical punk rocker brawler. That's what he is. Whites are very strong. Uh, he's goofy. Uh, kind of can't not really a coward, but kind of chewy. Kind of chewy. Kind of chewy. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So kind of liquidy. And those are our characters that we're playing tonight. Um, it's in the hairy situations. Hairy situations, yes. Oh. oh. <laughs> I think the dice was already started. It's an extracted. At least you did it. <laughs> All right. So, uh, that's the game. That's the characters. Let's get caught up on the story. So, last time we played, you yeah. know, we're all cool. sitting around the house, and Jesse is your ward, the girl that you saved who actually has... Uh, Virgil was. Virgil? Virgil. Virgil. Yeah, I'm your ward. Uh -huh. Virgil ward. Hello, Virgil. <laughs> so you're fishing a fishing out of Yeah, well, I like oh, to fish, man. and uh, you like, I like wizards a lot. Pete Bankman, <laughs> Rule of the Psychic. That was my second favorite show. <laughs> it was the first one. Bassmasters. Yeah, yeah, I know Bassmasters. Bassmasters. <laughs> go, small stars. Get you up here. <laughs> Let it go. Don't know why. I'm so hungry. So basically, you guys were all sitting around Wally's apartment, uh, his penthouse, I guess you could call almost the top floor of the apartment building. Uh, Jessie was there. She's the girl you guys saved who has a very significant empathic power, unlike most humans, kind of unexplained. Um, but she's not kin. So you guys kind of took her in and have been teaching her stuff, like teaching her about, like Gideon's been teaching her kin lore to know what kind of kin to recognize and how to defend yourself. Uh, I know you've been teaching her kind of a little bit of magic and what other kin things are. Uh, she hasn't really taken to the magic yet. She's not sure if she wants to go that route. Uh, I know some of the other guys have been teaching her like self-defense or a little bit of history and stuff like that. So she's kind of living with you under your protection. And uh, you guys were sitting around and uh, eating pizza or whatever. Some of you who could eat. Delivery, right? Yeah. <laughs> We don't want the pizza kid. You can keep that. Yeah. What kind of pizza you order? Meat <laughs> But there was a news report. Uh there were uh well I'll just read the news report. Uh, there were a pair of brutal tragedies shook the Chicago area this evening, and police say they could share a common thread. First occurred about seven o'clock earlier this evening when gunfire erupted in a large structure. Yeah, the news. <laughs> He's beamed up by an alien. We've been trying to reach you about your extended car warranty. Yeah. <laughs> when gunfire erupted, a large structure fire broke out at a popular Northside club known as Jake's. 
Emergency services battled the blaze, but no survivors were reported. Medical examiners have not been able to identify the, any of the victims. Nice. The death toll is at least 25 at this time. The check and tragedy was discovered an hour and a half later, about seven miles from Jake's. Police found a mutilated body in an alley behind a youth center not far from Cabrini Green. The body's head, hands, and feet have been removed and have not, been, and have not yet been accounted for. The victim appears to be a woman between the ages of 19 and 25, but has not yet been identified. Police now say that this is the fourth victim found this way in the last three weeks within a 25-block radius. They urge the public to be vigilant and travel in groups at night. The police have also released a composite sketch of this man and a drawing, a composite drawing of Adrian shows up on the screen. You. Who is wanted for questioning in relation to the four murders and the incident at Jake's Night Club. If you see this man. It was man, no one armed man. <laughs> if you see this man, do not interact with him, but call the police or call this tip line directly. And there was a 1 800 number that appeared on the screen. <laughs> I'm gonna, I'm, I'm, whatever. I got, a, I got a cell phone. The brick cell phone. Yeah. So basically, that's where the story started. Uh, you guys were like, uh, excuse me, and you found out that your lawyer, who was a demon, was actually killed, the final death. And you were kind of instantly sent a messenger with a message. And it was a very beautiful woman. Huh? What is the lawyer's final death anyway? Well, he was, he was a demon. Oh, yeah. Okay. yeah. As, as are most lawyers. They know the tarry yeah. goo in fire. Most, oh, in, in fire. Yeah. Yeah. most lawyers are vampires or demons. It's just a fact. Okay. It's stereotyping. <laughs> it's, it's racial profiling. It's true, though. <laughs> Species profiling. It's species dead, profiling. Dead profiling. Skin profiling. Yeah. It's some sort of profiling. Yeah. Yeah. profiling. Wait, it's a profile. You're still annoying. So, uh. You're still annoying. His replacement yes. arrived. Yeah, her name is Lily, yeah. and she is also a demon. Uh, she is a cross between Kate Beckinsale and Elvira, okay. Mistress of the Dark. Okay. Let's see if you can imagine what that is. Okay. Okay. Not really. Okay. Well, I'll have to draw it sometime. I'm yeah. good at that. Uh, basically, you she appro approached you and came to right, knew right where to get you, and when she arrived, she gave you a letter that was from your previous lawyer. And it yeah. was it was inscripted. Kovacs. <clears throat> yeah, or not Kovacs, but um, uh, go on. I can't okay. remember. But, Darius, Darius Bay. Darius, uh, he had this like magically inscripted scroll, and it basically told you that if if this is finding you, I have been dispatched or gone to my great reward or whatever it is. I'm dead, like truly dead. So if you if this is delivered to you by this messenger, trust them. I trust them wholeheartedly. She will now take over your the duties that I perform for you and uh that's pretty much I don't know what's going on, but it's probably something bad. So if you are connected with this in any way, please watch your back kind of thing. And it was an honor to serve you. See when you join me in hell. That's basically what it was. So apparently, upon you to have a lawyer there when you arrive. Yeah, <laughs> yeah exactly. See, so uh, you got the letter. She pretty much told you she's got some other things to take care of, and then she was going to get things in order. And so she has to set up her own office and all that stuff. Figure out because his office is cordoned off. So she pretty much introduced herself. Look forward to serving you and meeting you and and helping you with whatever, whatever needs. She's been following his files closely you asked about the uh other kin that yeah the succubus that you guys kind of oh the, the one that's the we kind of blackmailed black working. working for uh yeah. things she is still at the, the company and she's being kept a close eye on but she's still doing her job you okay. know she hasn't tried to break away or anything it's but it's like here you're a file clerk now do this mm -hmm. so with maybe chances for advancement later. But she pretty much bid her adieu and left, and you guys decided to go look into what the heck is going on. I think you wanted to go to Darius's. We went to Darius's uh, went to his, offices. Yeah. And when you went out <clears throat> the first time on the street, a lot of people on the street were like, <laughs> you know, there's a TV show 
like a TV Duh. shop, Borg, and they're all like, Most hey, the news. <laughs> hey, that's that guy. Uh, there were a couple <laughs> kin, looked like maybe vampires that recognized you and kind of hurried off with Gideon and Shiro. The Shiro? Yeah. Yeah. Gideon and Shiro kind of head him off the pass and kind of question him, kind of threaten him. They're like, oh, no, we weren't going to do anything. Okay, just keep going, keep walking. Uh, there's, so you guys, the stewed, stewed to make a Rex, transformed into a car, and then Doom Buggy. Yeah, Doom Buggy. And then <laughs> down into, I believe, Wally's car. Wally. Yeah. Oh, no, Gideon had a car. Yeah, 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 yeah. Gideon had a car, like a big old Dodge Diplomat. So basically, you guys pile in there. Do we have to know what shape to get in there? Got to the Disney, Disney World? Or land? There's land you just walk into. It's in your world you have to send a contract in with several copies and... So anyway, you got to uh, Darius's office and it was locked off. She got up there various ways. Some of you came in through the front door, mm. beat the shit out of the security guard. Where were you, Ben? <laughs> Finally. Oh. Hi, man. <laughs> He's just used to us. <laughs> He's like, he thought he had already started already. <laughs> he thought he had another hour. <laughs> I thought we had the time to get him. Yeah, but I'm going to install that. Yeah. yeah. So, anyway, welcome, uh, man. Welcome. You went through uh, Darius's office and found some safes and stuff. A lot of it was basically lawyer stuff that didn't really concern you. Didn't really seem interesting. There were a couple things. Uh, you did find some sort of information on somebody higher up in the Chicago, either the police department or more like the political climate, mm-hmm. a governor or something like that, that may be potential blackmail information, but it didn't name the individual. You don't know who it is. You did find some of that. You also found some information on the squat. You. Yeah. Uh, I don't remember that part. The squad. Yeah, it was a nightclub that was possibly oh. connected with anti-human. That's right. And connected with uh, Adam Noir, who is the leader of the complex, which is the anti-human faction. <laughs> and he seems to be kind of in charge of the Chicago chapter, section, whatever you want to call it. Um, and you did find... Vague information on the guy you have been brought here by, apparently, the Shadow. Uh, and basically, it's the same kind of information you've that was gathered. information that I probably had him gather. Yeah. yeah. And it was more on him, which is really not a lot. But you also found notes for him. Like, Darius had actually done some looking into things for him. Mm-hmm. So there was that, too. So uh, the rest of it was more... Just, yeah, that's nice. We can blackmail the police chief, but we can do that on our own time anyway, kind of thing. Mm-hmm. So, yeah. Uh, once you did that, you kind of left, and in the parking garage, you were stopped by a police detective. Uh, her name was Cicero. Uh, I think it's Ramona Cicero, if I remember right. I'll get her out when we need her. Um, she was basically a police detective who was kin. And she had heard, well, obviously she knows about what the report is. She was actually looking for you to see if... Well, we admit, we saw her name in one of those, in the paperwork upstairs, too. Didn't we? Yes, yeah. yeah. And it was kind of like gathering stuff on kin police or corrupt police. And she's kind of like, whatever note she found, it made it sound like she's kin. She's in the police department. But she's not corrupt. At least not for kin. Mm-hmm. You know, she doesn't take bribes, she doesn't do any of that stuff. It's more, she joined the police department to almost protect and serve the kin. And there are some other kin officers in the department too, but she's a detective. She's pretty trustworthy, I guess you could say. Um, yeah, she confronted you or approached you in the department <laughs> and kind of basically said, look, something's up with the police department. We've been looking into these mutilation murders it's a serial killer and there have been like six or seven detectives on this task force for the last three weeks trying to figure out any kind of connection and all of a sudden these government guys come in and say we know who it is we'll take over from here and that broadcast went out she's like i don't know who these fed guys are but they don't seem like normal feds to me but 
she's just a detective, so they're feds. She's not going to just walk into their office and say, well, so what's your deal? She's trying to look into it, but she wanted to give you a heads up like, I don't know what this is, but I don't think it's just the FBI. And you guys brought up Target Alpha, which is the government force that hunts Kim. And from what people know, they don't really want to destroy the Kim. They more want to control the Kim. Now, if you can't be controlled, they will destroy you. In fact, Boulder, Colorado, the Kim there were wiped out by Target Alpha. Like all of them in one event. And it's like, oh, so these guys mean business. <clears throat> so you, you don't know you, if it's Target Alpha who's behind this, the police department, but... You also think it might be Adam Noir because he is anti-human and he might be tied to the thing with Jake's and maybe he's trying to pass blame off on you guys. Your mom's here. Hi, Mom. Hi, Hi Sue. Hi, Hi Mom. Hello. So basically, you guys had, she's kind of like, well, you do what you need. If you need me, call. I've got some more leads I want to follow up on. Some more people I might want to talk to. And if I find anything, I can contact you or you can contact me. So, because she's actually done work for the shadow as well, so she's kind of like, I know you guys are pretty. Res- if you're working for the shadow, you must have some respect mm-hmm. about you. So, she kind of went off on her own thing, and you guys decided to go to the squad. And yeah. as you guys were going to the cars, after that, you were approached by Romero and the Cold, the Knights of the Living Dead. Oh, that's right. Yeah. And the way, and he, they're pro-human, and Gideon's part of that group, so they are pro-human all the way. And they were confronting you like, so what's this? You you kill her now? Blah, blah, blah. And you're like, are you stupid? He's like, I feel like you in the eyes and was like, yeah, I guess I'm stupid. Okay. <laughs> yeah. Because you're not kidding. All right. What do you need? <laughs> so yeah. they're just kind of like, they wanted to make sure you weren't responsible. They don't know you. And they're like, Gideon vouches for you. But if you say you didn't do it, he says you didn't do it. You probably didn't do and it. And then they fill us in on Adam Noir a little bit. Yeah. They told you that Adam Noir is like a pretty no nonsense customer. Uh, he runs the complex, so they have no love lost, but they don't want to go anywhere near it. Uh, the bar is the spot. That's where he hangs out. And uh, they don't know if he owns the bar, but it's a complex hangout. So if he's there, he's in charge. It's kind of like they have a king, mm-hmm. and he's the king of Chicago, is, so to speak. So, do we know what he was? Uh, they do tell you he is an anime. He is a French okay. anime. So and he's pretty old, pretty powerful. So, and they were like, "If you go there, good luck." I mean, if if you piss him off, he's rip you to shreds. And don't forget, the squat is an anti-human bar, so everybody in there will tear you to shreds. So watch your p's and q's, or at least say your piece. See what he knows. Don't make him mad. He tells you to do something, you probably have to do it. So they wish you luck. And I think where we left off was you guys were going to get the cars and go find a swap. Yeah. They tell you it is in that neighborhood up by Green Green uh, in the north. Uh, probably up by... <clears throat> yeah, oh, they told you it's an old boundary building, like old big boundary that's abandoned, and they've converted it to... The nightclub. Oh, clean. So basically, you guys can head out and find the squad if you want. Yep. Okay. Let's head out and squat, man. Uh, you drive north, you start getting into the bad parts of town. Uh, fortunately, Gideon's car and the dune buggy look like they just ride in here. Like, they are all caps, they're spray paint on the cars. You know, it's like, oh, yeah, these are. You don't stick out very much. So, especially Gideon's car. So, you guys find your way. Uh, as you kind of look around, it's kind of like, well, they said it's more boundaries. So, you kind of head to one of the industrial districts. Yeah. On the way. Yes. Um, do they have a phone number for the hedge witches that we've worked with before? Oh, yeah. You probably do because they have a business. Yeah. Uh, so, I'm going to call them i uh, don't know who i'm going to end up talking to of them but fill them in on the decapitation thing of the bodies and ask them if they've got any way with their hedgy witchy stuff 
to be able to talk with a deceased. Okay. In an effort to try to find out huh. info on those members. Okay. Well, as you're talking to them, uh, if you remember correctly, they are the three witches were Claire, the Chisha, and Antoinette. Yeah. I don't know if you can see any of this. Mm -hmm. yeah. Mm -hmm. yeah. Those are the three witches. Uh, they run basically an apothecary and a crystal healing shop with aromatherapy goods, <laughs> essential oils. Uh, you probably get uh, Claire on the phone and you're talking to her about all this. And he is driving and as you were kind of like, <laughs> yeah um you're kind of talking to them and they're like hey how's it going what's going on we heard about that Adrian what's going on with him and he's all over the news I guess somebody told us we were watching the report what's going on there and you know you're trying to explain it because you're like well do you know anybody who could talk to the dead and all this and you guys up front see Gideon like uh, damn it. Uh, he's trying to get a word in. But they're like, well, I don't know about talking to the dead. I mean, we might be able to perform some rituals or something. They can contact the spirit if they're still around. Sometimes if they die in a brutal manner, it's, their spirit departs pretty quick. They don't tend to hang around. But if they did die in a brutal manner, maybe they are hanging around, especially if they have business. They need I will to verify that. <laughs> And finally, Gideon gets stopped when he's like, I can talk to the dead. Did I know that? Uh, he's never done it. Yeah, as I say, when, yeah. since when have you been able to talk to the dead? A long time. They're really boring. They usually don't talk to them. <laughs> <laughs> don't know you think you could have brought that up a little earlier? I didn't know you wanted to talk to a dead person. Well, I didn't I'm not know we wanted to either. I don't, he's the one that mentioned it. Yeah. He just mentioned it. <laughs> Yeah, well, uh, when we get done here, we'll uh, contact the, um, the detective. Okay. To, she'll have to get us uh, probably in. So to do, uh, uh, do you need to catch the body or something? Or be next to it. I mean, yeah. call them. Okay. So you actually do need a corpse. You need a corpse, not just like where they died or something like right. that. Right, I need the corpse. To to okay, yeah. we'll, we'll, we'll get the detective to uh, get us into where they got the decapitated corpse. Well, okay. Probably be at the corners. Yeah, yeah corners. well, she'll probably have to get us in. Yeah. When he was doing the news, reminded me of the line. The man's decapitated body lying on the floor next to his own severed head. A head which has no name. <laughs> I know his name. <laughs> if you get too close, it'll be it doesn't, brain aneurysm. Doesn't have any light. That one. There's one. That one over there has flashy lights. Steve, knock it off. Yeah, well, he did. It cost me money. But that's all the extra money was. The little blinky lights. Pretty intense. It is. It is intense, actually. Yeah. What we need is just a ton of blinking lights right in the middle of everything, so that way nobody pays attention to anything going on with the blinky lights for the backdrop. Hey! <laughs> we suddenly get thousands of followers because we have accidentally hypnotized everyone. <laughs> like hitting their toad. <laughs> no. Hey, what's her name? Cereal. What's her name? Cecilio. Uh, Cicero. 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 So she probably didn't have like she didn't have a cell phone or anything like that. Uh, uh she <laughs> might be in a police officer. Pager. She give you a number. Pager at least. So you can try. It. Oh, I guess a pager. Yeah. She Maybe has a pager. It's pager. Okay. I forgot about those. So because I guys sell because I got the cell phone, so I'll I'll call her pager. Okay. All right. We'll see you. So, yeah, you call and leave a message with her. I have an answering machine at home. With a cassette tape. Yeah. yeah. It's <laughs> they used to do crazy things. Yeah. Mm hmm. <laughs> I used to do crazy stuff in general. Yeah, I know. The one that most people like for me, I had my skateboard. 
Mm -hmm. And I was just rolling the wheel back and forth. And if I can't come to the phone right now, I'm teaching my kid the roller skates. <laughs> that was a really good job. <laughs> I had uh, a place that I was working at, um, the maintenance guy there. Uh, I had to keep calling him to get something, you know. And, yeah. And uh, I called him one time, it's towards the end of the day here, because we would need to find something out. And, and uh, he starts talking and everything. And he's like, hello, hello. And, you know, it's like, because we have fucking bad connections on our phones. And, right. And it's so all like, oh, well, shit, you know. And so I, like, I left, went outside, fucking called him again. You know, and then I was like, wait a minute, he's saying the same, it was a fucking, it was a fucking voicemail. Hello? Yeah. Hello? And I was like, Hello? Yeah. Really? What? Yeah. You have the that. That's the one I had. Yep. Was, hey, how's it going? Really? No way. <laughs> yeah? All right, then leave a message. Did you hear what I'm saying? There used to be when cell phones came out, there was an app you download that was prank call app. This is when I was at the police force, I was nabbing it. And all the cops had this on their phone to call everybody, all the other cops, with these prank calls. And when somebody, somebody put it on the chief's phone, the chief knowing it. You couldn't call a phone that didn't have that app on it. So he, for like a week, he was getting these. Well, we got your paternity test here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> the best one was there was a, a, a couple that were fighting. You call it and be like the wife was calling the police. She'd be like, is this police? Put the goddamn thing down. Oh, he was like, where are you at? Where are you at? <laughs> it was terrible. Yeah, you can leave a message on uh, Sister of Pager. I'll get a call from her soon. Um, but you guys kind of get into the seedy part of town and you're not really sure where SWAT is exactly. Um, you do see transient people around. You do see some gang members hanging out. Uh, every once in a while you see a car drive by, but there are people on the streets that are hanging around. Uh, some are isolated with communities. You see a couple of prostitutes. As you drive around, you notice there are a couple kin among these. So I don't know if you want to stop and ask for directions or get a feel for the, you know, where this place is, or do you just want to keep driving around? Drive around a little bit. Drive around a little bit. Okay, so everybody, uh, if you have clothes on, if you have city knowledge, Chicago, or if you have street lines, whichever is higher. I'll let you roll one of those. City knowledge or what? Street wise. That would be city knowledge is where stuff is, but street wise is more oh it's a sneaky. Okay, so I have sixty in city knowledge. Okay. I have twenty nine oh. city knowledge. And I rolled a thirty three. Mm -hmm. No nope. nope. one ever be higher. And, and we add yeah, the sure we'll higher. We, uh, we add the appropriate um <laughs> Um, stats. Stats. So it should be a, already yeah. figured on your yeah. character. Yeah. So you already been figured so in. That's what we all mean. It's a lot easier. I just to add two numbers. The, the level of the bubble, and then, yeah. yeah. Fire number. So what's your, what's your skill? Uh, I did minus one. What's your complete? So she would get that. Uh, right. that is... Should be right 20 there with 21 out of 21. 20 out of 24. I, my, 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 my intellect is 24. I got 20 out of 39. So obviously I've not had anything. Yeah. Okay. So what I did was just change that. Okay. But, okay. But for the time being, Bobby says our house phone was one digit off in the local movie theater. Yeah. And we had to make a message on our answering machine about what movies <laughs> we were watching, yeah. and then tell people that they had the wrong number. Yeah, because I always had people. Is this the last No. Uh, I had one for the movie. What movie's playing tonight? They're like, right now I'm watching King Kong. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you're trying to the let's see it, aren't you? Yeah? Yeah, they're wrong. They're wrong. No. <laughs> it's 9983. It was 9938. Sure. We got that all the time. And ben says, my mom had the same situation while she was growing up, but her 
but her and her brothers would give the movies playing from the TV guy. <laughs> 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 What's about playing like, well? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> I, I mean, Smash. Uh, Streetwise. Streetwise, you made it? Yep. Okay, you made it. And I made the Streetwise. I made 21 out of 29 on some, uh, some City Knowledge. City Knowledge, yeah. okay. So this, those of you with City Knowledge know, okay, it's an abandoned foundry, and I know there's one big one that was abandoned in 1974 in this area. Those of you who made it by Streetwise, once you start getting to that area, you start noticing graffiti on the walls. <laughs> so the graffiti is, you, you can pick out where it says, like, squat with an arrow, or complex this way. Mm -hmm. You start seeing that in the graffiti, and you're like, okay, yeah, we're heading in the right direction. So pretty soon you guys come to kind of a desolate area, uh, this old three three-story building. It looks like it's intact, but it's very derelict. Uh, windows are broken, stuff like that. It's not, doesn't seem to be structurally unsound from the outside, but it's obviously an abandoned factory. But you do notice it's kind of like a, a long gravel road that goes up to it. It's got a huge parking lot that's weeds growing through it and all that stuff. It's got a big like chain link fence with wooden slats. So it's like a privacy fence that circles the thing, but as you kind of come up that road, it's like you can kind of see between where the gates open, you can see the building itself. Um, you do notice there's probably like an old little guard shack out front, hmm. and it does look pitch black, but as you kind of pull up, you can see what looks like when you're, when the headlights flash against the guard shack, it's like a raccoon, hmm. but probably about six foot seven. So it's like you just see the eyes flash as it watches, and as, as you come up, you just see this huge arm, almost like the crossing arm, just kind of reach out of the window, like put its hand out. Um, let's see, anybody have Kinlore? Yes. You can roll your kin lore to see if you know what this is, or potentially what this is. Well, that would be under K. Uh, K. K. Under arcane skills. Uh, oh. Halfway. 60 out of 57. <laughs> Not there big. Nope. Nope. 67 out of 29. Nope. 67 out of 63. <laughs> so, uh -huh. Gideon's like, hmm. <laughs> Hey, you got too much, yep. So I think we all started because somebody had it, and we started learning, yeah. learning from each other. Yeah, I had. I had uh, that shit. Is that what I'm now? I, I yeah. didn't didn't pick up one of those things. Okay. It is a ham salad. <laughs> <laughs> we are funny ham salad. <laughs> You've spread yourself too thin. Yeah, vampire from the bowling alley. Yeah. So he keeps collecting sandwiches. Mm. He spread himself too thin. Yeah, vampire in the bowling alley. No, I was going to comment to your vampire in the bowling alley. Yeah. Because it's your nuts for all the other things. No wonder you were doing. Make sandwiches and put them under glass or something like that. And no, 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 that was never. Like butter on that toast and bread. Yeah, somebody did. In some game. Was that your. your crazy clown guy there no you you were just the manager you were yeah. the end of the thing the, what are you were doing yeah we were something about somebody collecting sandwiches i might have yeah. it could have been my sandwich guy you're not struck to in a bowling alley huh you would have people make you sandwiches and you put them under glass what i yeah. never did that what why did i do that because it was storytelling it made no sense whatsoever oh yeah. because it was something to do with <laughs> the storytelling story thing yeah. okay yeah. she would constantly have me in the pro shop, make you sandwiches and you bring them back, and you're like, Yes, that's nice. And you put it on your glass. I don't really remember that at all. Well, you couldn't eat it, but you'd look at <laughs> yeah. it. Yeah, but I just don't remember that. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> looks silly. <laughs> so did I. You're not, you're not, <laughs> I don't even know how you need my character. What are you talking about? Oh, that's it. He's into the clown convention, so there's Brad's mouse rock to with the long, ratty cloak. With a balloon animal hat and a members only jacket. Yeah. So, <laughs> it's serious. Looks <laughs> awesome. Like some guy from the 90s. <laughs> so funny. All right. Uh, you see what looks like a very long arm with these misshapen fingers and almost claws 
like complete like a paw with very spiky black hair very muscular and as you pull up the this thing has like flared nostrils flat face real real wide cruel mouth full of jagged teeth long black hair that's just spiky and greasy uh and these are hagfers or hackers mm. it is i was just looking at that yeah that's what it is they are in six to eight feet tall and they are big strong not strong but he kind of puts his hand out of the guardrail Gideon stops the car and as you pull up kind of looks in sniffs and as he looks at basically as he looks at Gideon and who's riding with Gideon I'm, I'm definitely with Gideon. Gideon are you with well I think you were riding in the dune buggy mm-hmm. you were with Gideon right um go ahead. Okay. yeah you're okay were you with Gideon or were you in the dune buggy I don't remember it didn't I don't probably with Gideon okay so as he looks in, he kind of looks at all of you, he looks at Gideon first, and you see him just, oh, looks over at you, oh, mm-hmm. and you, he leans forward out of the guard shack, real mm-hmm. close to your window, mm-hmm. you know, those nostrils flare, and he just kind of, mm-hmm. backs off. <laughs> <laughs> Hasty like, tree. As he looks at you, he lifts his arm back in. Gideon's like, That's thanks. a gate. <laughs> yeah. And thanks. Tries on. You guys, as soon as you pull up and you're in the car, he just waves you on. We can. There's a samurai driving a dune buggy. Samurai. A big samurai driving this weird dune buggy. He just like, I have an intelligence of 10, and I know you can go on it. That's right. It's like some weird Hanna Barbera cartoon. Yeah. Come on. <laughs> Put it yeah. in the back of your ace and stuff. That's right. <laughs> Dapple, Dapple. <laughs> so, yeah, basically, you guys, uh, on in, and once you get. It's monthly. Once you guys get in the lot, you see, like, muscle cars motorcycles all kinds of stuff in here uh random vehicles uh old panel trucks and stuff like that means that say free candy that kind of thing are all, <laughs> are all parked in here so it's cool oh. they hang out and it's oh. obviously far enough away where most people are just going to see all these cars. right so it's, it's ice cream, cream trucks yeah the street <laughs> enough yeah probably they uh. are anti-human so they'll, they'll like, oh, they're all there Ooh. Oh, oh. Well, Chicago, I wish I had the swan truck there. <laughs> the swan truck. <laughs> yeah, we always cruise through the neighborhoods. And, yeah. You know, all kinds of middle age. You want some tenderloin? <laughs> you look like a tenderloin. You like I have one. <laughs> We tried to do a sweet face on that one. We lumbering, lumbering out from the swan strip with the little tiny uniform. Fish stick. Yeah, yeah. Anyone? He's even got the uh, sailor raincoat. Fish stick, Gordon. All Gordon Tenderman. There's tartar sauce in the van if you want to go get it for yourself. Not refrigerated. It's been sitting there for a few months. It's in the back there. It's in the freezer. Down in the bottom. It's not in the freezer. Yeah. Yeah. You make your tartar sauce the best. <laughs> so as you guys pull up, you can find a place to park. But you notice one of the side doors up there, there is like a line of people. Um, and probably somebody at the door, like a bouncer. Uh, not a hafter, but something up there. Obviously, Ken is just standing there as a bouncer. Um, but there are probably like seven or eight people in the line. Maybe, yeah, probably about ten. Ticket, people. please. Ticket, please. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Ticket, ticket, please. No ticket, please. No ticket. No ticket. We're going to need to get little dimes. But it, it looks, <laughs> there's a door and it's got like a real dim blue light. And that's on the entrance. <laughs> <laughs> I got the in the van. 
Boots, get him. <laughs> Let's go back in time and do it again. Right. Oh. Oh. Ah. No, okay. Oh, thank goodness you hit me in the brain. No damage. It's all right. To the side of the head. I don't know. I got to adjust my aim. Terrible. No, oh, it hit me in the brain. It's still rattling. That little piece of that yeah. Yeah. Basically, you guys head up to the door, and there's people looking like they're getting it in line. Yes. And then, see, it's still rattling around in there. Oh, that's my dream. It's always funny. Oh, shoot. There it is. Yeah. <laughs> um, I could hand it at the door. You notice there's a bouncer. Uh, he's wearing like a tight black shirt, t shirt. Uh, he's got leather pants and biker boots with some spikes on. Uh, he's probably got a strength of like 30. I mean, he's ripped. You notice he's extremely hairy. Uh, he does have like big mutton chops that are black. And he's got black hair that's kind of pulled back in a ponytail. His eyebrows are quite a bit thicker than normal, and he looks like he's when he's when he talks, he's got an overbite. That's an overbite. Oh jeez! Yeah. <laughs> when he pulls his feet back to talk to somebody, he's got canines about that long, mm. and they kind of come up from below too. Mort. Uh, this is obviously a werewolf. Yeah. So he's not even wolfed out yet. Where? All right. He's just okay. got a very low humanity. Okay. So I'm going to throw the ball. And you guys yeah. have <laughs> Who's a good boy? <laughs> squeak, 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 Who's squeak, squeak. a good boy? Oh, oh. Bobby says, yay, then I'm going to throw that. <laughs> yay. Well, then I'm going to throw it up. I'm not going to carry it right now. <laughs> Hairball. <laughs> We had a cat character at our Rust event, our LARP event, yeah. and uh, they were trying to wake people up. <laughs> oh, God. Oh, I didn't wake them up. Oh. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> she started doing it. We were lost. <laughs> oh, oh, uh, Boo or Belle? Belle. 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 Yeah, I can, oh, I can see so that. She's hilarious. Oh. <laughs> she did it really well, too. It's just like, okay. I'm awake now. <laughs> So, anyway, you guys go up and get in line. Uh, as you get up there, there's probably two people, look like Ken, getting let go in. There's probably like a, a group of three standing there that you can obviously, obviously tell they're, they look like vampires. Just the way they're dressed, the way they carry themselves, they look like vampires. Uh, behind them, you do notice there's a guy, and he's got like four girls with him. And he is obviously a vampire. Just the way he looks, the way he's dressed, his hair is all slicked back, he was very suave. You can tell he's turned on the seduction and the charm. Poor girls. He looks like he's probably in his... 200s? Yeah, mid-20s. Okay. Yeah, mid-200s. Yeah, physical age, he's like in his mid to old, older 20s. Uh, the girls all look like they're probably about 19, 20 like college girls mm -hmm. uh there's four of them and they're all kind of sort of goth metaled out and they're they're just like oh yeah like he's taking these four girls out on a date they're not like they probably don't smell like Ken, though, do they they do not look like yeah. they look like her and <laughs> if they're going in here i just can't read it there the only time they come out is the, Waste with chunks, so they're probably not gonna make it. Long. So this vampire is with them, and it's kind of like, "Hey, I'm bringing party favors to the party tonight," you know. So he's just schmoozing them up. Uh, they don't seem to know any different. Of, of course, they're just human. So I'm a guy. He's even sparkling, sparkling. you know. <laughs> sparkling oh, no, no, you're right. But you know, <laughs> I'm not even gonna put that. Dude. Our vampires all startled here. Yeah. 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 Only when they light them on fire. Like, <laughs> light them on fire. So you guys kind of get in line behind you. That's where Sparky would be. You walk up and get in line and kind of notice that. Uh, take a perception check. Everybody? Or? Yeah. Nope. Where's perception? Uh, it's right at the top of this app. Oh. Yeah. Suck. Where are we? We all suck. No. Do I have pants? <laughs> no. 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 Okay. We're not elves. <laughs> <laughs> I might have made it. Right. Oh, mostly gold for here. I would have given you a bonus of 
15. No. No. Uh, yeah, close, but. Do it, mate. Yeah. What are you doing? Um. Yeah, I'm going to work. Huh? I'm going to work. is for like if you want to use an unskilled check. Uh, just for unskilled checks. checks. I'm going to drop all my points and then roll again with luck. Yeah, to say I'm better with luck than anything else. You know, anything anything else. Yeah. Can't uh, you spend a luck point to get an extra dice or something like that? Uh, no. Okay. And you okay. start the whole thing over again and roll again? Okay. Can we, bri- <laughs> can we bribe you? Yeah. Would you like this for licorice? Let's see. Let's check. Let's check. I can give you a hairball. <laughs> <laughs> I'll give you Brad. Brad's hairball. I'll take it. You're taking your oh, hairball home? No, that's what I'm taking. Oh, where are you taking By myself. Oh, you he took, took himself. Him. Oh my god. What do I... Aliens took me. Oh, I died, Brad. <laughs> oh, wow. <laughs> well, uh, how you... You're all being broke right now. Sweet. That's why I feel so weird. <laughs> and I thought that was my brain. What <laughs> allows characters to use skills they cannot normally use? And down here it says. Go away! <laughs> <laughs> you suck! Whenever the city planner believes that a character deserves the possibility of aid from random factors, that player rolls percentile type dice against the character's luck score. So I will allow, if you want to like get this, I want you to notice something. It's something that's going to be pretty easy to notice for you guys. Obviously not. If you would like to roll against your luck score, do that. So it's like a second roll. You still try. Yeah. It, Actually, it, my first one would have made it. Shh, I didn't know that. Fun. That's fine. Ah, uh, yeah. No, 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 not at all. 84% chance that it's still fine. If you roll 100, does that explode? <laughs> <laughs> no, it says right here, go away. <laughs> oh, all right, so chapter three is over. Yeah. <laughs> it just passed us. Sorry, you're still sitting at the door. Oh, gosh, you're ever going to get in here? You're going to notice those or not? <laughs> the mushroom cloud finally dissipates. <laughs> now, right, so you two made it? Yeah, I'm just you. Yeah, no, basically made Cobra G.I. Joe you know, just fought a battle through here. Yeah. And Cobra! You're, yeah, 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 no. you're looking at your finger and like, Cobra people, I don't understand. Except for the bats exploding, that's it. Yeah. 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 Did you ever watch Community? Yeah, I love that. Did oh, you yeah, you're talking about it. I haven't watched it. They have an episode where they are playing as G.I. Joe. Oh, characters. yeah, they actually animate it, too, yeah. And it's a, it's an animated oh, episode. Wow. But the thing is that the play the characters that are the from the show, as they're playing this G.I. Joe, they're actually, like, killing. No, they, they're, they're actually killing the, yeah. jo, the Cobra awesome. troops. And then the G.I. Joe and Cobra end up coming together, G.I. Cobra. And going out. Did <laughs> anybody else get confused when the G.I. Joes were shooting red lasers and Cobra were shooting blue lasers because of Star Wars and the exact opposite? Yeah, well, it's probably yeah, a copyright thing. Yeah. Yeah. No, hey, wait. I think it was time to learn child. Do you think the G.I. Joe or the American, oh my gosh, yeah, they're the They're, the, they're evil. Yeah. And, uh, Cobra are the Jedi. And Cobra's the good guys. <laughs> I'm like, oh my God. <laughs> All right, so you two made your check. Yeah. Did you guys stand in line and you guys kind of noticed this vampire is taking these four human girls in? You? Oh, well, they you basically see there. Gideon tapping his foot, kind of shifting his eyes and like biting his lip and twitching. Yeah. He's like, you got a poop? <laughs> 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 so I'm not since I'm not really paying attention to him though, I was gonna ask, was there any way I can maybe attract one of the girls' attention without him noticing? Get her to look at me. Yeah, probably. You can you can wait till he's talking to one of the girls or talks to somebody else in line, because the other vampires are up there too, and they're kinda like and, you know, they're kinda doing that. He's like, Yeah, I got a little lemon sinker. So mm-hmm. when he turns around to talk to those guys. You can okay. tap her on her shoulder. I'm going to tap her on her shoulder, and then I'm going to try to use Mesmerize. Okay. Ooh. 
You will buy only drumsticks. <laughs> you will be only drumsticks. We're going to use the point of humanity, you know that, right? Yeah. Whatever the word. And so it's two dash one, so it's two, or is it no? The last number is him. You're like Eagle Bird Humper Dink. Okay. Oh, so one then. Yeah, one humanity. Okay. Oh, the humanity. Oh, the manatee. 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 Oh, the Nobody feels the bad for me. No, 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 no. I think that dude had a spark plug for a piercing. <laughs> so she can turn kind of whatever. Okay. Okay, it's weird. So, actually, it's probably more like, oh, you're cute. Who are you with? Oh my god. You know, it's like the guys you're around are like, oh, he's a creep, but look at all the dweebs he's traveling with, you know. But she just kind of like it, it does that give me an extra time? Is that yeah. she's like glancing around? I can try again. Yeah, and and when you say something, one of the other girls kind of turns, so you can try. And... Can I do more than one? In the meantime, Bobby posted in the chat. She said, "How many of our players were in the military?" Because thank you for your service. Only yeah. time. Thanks, Wade. Anyone else? Nope. I was in the voice call. I was too. But we didn't serve anybody. I did mail I was in the Girl Scouts. Yeah, huh? I did mail away from that. Yeah, you did. I was in the Steel Brigade. <laughs> you did? I think that is on record in the U.S. government. Trust me. I'm sure it is. They know all about it. Boy, I'm sorry because when I put on my martial arts, is I wrote in Taekwondo. Leap. Taekwondo. <laughs> <laughs> and his name was Striker after Ted Striker from Airplanes. I hope that got Give me a screwdriver. Yeah, yeah. Oh, Anybody yeah. out there watching, if you were once yeah. in the military yeah. and any services, happy Veterans Day. Thank you for your service. Okay. Thursday. Thursday. Yeah. Yeah. Is it Thursday? Boys Day. Eleventh. Uh, sorry to TikTok guys. I'm not monitoring the chat up there, so if you're They're talking, we don't see it. Sorry. We <laughs> should make Ben a moderator, and he can watch the. <laughs> Uh, looks like it's one person at a time. Okay, well, I'll try that one again. Okay. Hey, baby. Mm-hmm. Actually, while he's doing that, can I get the attention of a different one? Sure. Because I've got domination. Ooh, now we're going a whole different air crowd here. Brad, I'm just going to go home. You guys, <laughs> you guys take care of this. If you want to make another check, I will tap, tap, tap. Hi. He is kind of. You're not a bad looking dude. What is your check? Two, maybe probably two. two. For a twenty-seven. Oh, uh, 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 twenty-seven. Yeah, that's pretty good. So I will let you if you want to make another check. And yeah. Luck score because she's kind of like he's talking to me. It's kind of good looking. It's like it's like the dude from Lost Boys. Yeah. Next to the samurai who's transparent, but a twenty-two. <laughs> <laughs> nope. Oh, you said use luck score though. Yeah. Yeah. Good luck. Yeah. Okay. So. Yeah. Seven. <laughs> well, yeah, but does that work with mesmerize? I mean, because mesmerize is a skill that I have. Yeah. Okay. All right. Domination. Okay. You're like, you will do what I say. You're like, listen to the fuck up. <laughs> Actually, I'll hold the sword cane, tap it up against my, like, hold it up my forehead, and then <laughs> domination. <laughs> okay. And uh, <laughs> you need to get your friends home. Yeah, I'd pretty much say the same thing. You need to get your friends home. Uh, so she gets fire. a will, will roll to resist she it. Get the Will Smith roll. And so does she. So they have an open relationship. <laughs> <laughs> All right. So for you at home, just so you know the difference between mesmerize and domination. Mesmerize the power to make others do the bidding of the user. User makes a successful edge roll, which she did. And the victim must fail their will roll, which she did. Once mesmeriz- mesmerization is established, the user may issue one command that will be followed to the letter. The right. command may even be illegal to the victim. If the user wishes to give more commands, the victim is allowed to an escape roll for each separate command. 
many stable succeeds, all mesmerization is broken. If the mesmerization is broken, it may be reestablished. The victim will not remember anything about being mesmerized unless the user explicitly commands them to do so. In a domination, very similar. Now, the ability to control minds and actions of others. This edge, once initiated, remains in effect until the user drops it. The victim breaks control in a successful role against will, or the user is forcefully rendered unconscious. Normal sleep on the part of the user will not affect the domination edge. The user must make a uh, successful roll against the edge score. The intended victim then rolls will. This roll fails, they are under, under the control of the user. The user can simultaneously dominate a number of people equal to the edge score. The more people that are controlled, however, the harder it is to gain control of new people. The number of people that, this, that the user is presently controlling is applied to the edge roll as a positive modifier. Mod, mod the pacifier. <laughs> the victim may break the control of the user by making a successful roll against will. Yeah, yeah. So what is your kind of like suggestion? Yeah. Go home, take your friends with you. Yeah, we can control. As soon as they leave, they're gonna be like, why why do we go? I don't know. Why do we leave the club? It's so cool. You're just it's like, go home. <laughs> yes, master. They leave mm -hmm. until you get until well, around the like, one, just one. the first one. But then they, as soon as you like, why did we leave? All right, so you guys succeeded. So they're going to follow you to the letter. So what exactly do you say to these girls? Make your sandwich. I <laughs> was saying um, you need to go home with your friends. And change the I was saying take your friends home. Okay. So. So they kind of, <laughs> you do the bell and we'll see. You do the <laughs> basically you guys, your friends. Say that the girls they kind of space for a second and then just kind of look at each other and they're like look back at you and they kind of whisper to each other and kind of whisper to the other girls. It's <laughs> so uh let's see. Well, those girls fail their willpower too. And as they kind of, <laughs> yeah, they could do it in any way they could. You didn't specify. You probably hear them. We should really get home. Why? I think this is the right club for us. I like some pizza. Why? These guys all look really hot. Why do these guys? Hey, hey, hey. Kill somebody. <laughs> like, Maybe we should. I don't know. Look at the bouncer. He's he's got a nasty customer. Yeah. What do we do? I'm like, well, let's just, let's just leave. So they start to back away. You know, kind of like the vampire who's with them kind of turned to ladies, where are you going? Oh, uh, we really need to get going. I'm sorry. We we thought we just realized we have to get home. And we're not going to be able to participate tonight. So maybe next time. It was really nice to meet you. Thanks for the night out, but we just can't do it. And they, they, as, soon as, they, they as soon as they back away or turn, I tap him on the shoulder with my cane. Okay. He's like, looks at you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, I had some girls for the party, but I guess you're not going to. Can't hold on to your food. Just shrug. <laughs> the three vampires behind him are like, ooh, dude, hey, he's got a point. Like, Screw you. Who are you? He watches him go. And he's like, hold on. And he walks over. He's like, in there with the he's like, hey, you're going to lose your place in line, asshole. <laughs> <laughs> you're just, you're going to get You're going to lose. You will lose. You're going to lose a lot of respect because you're going to tell everybody what a coward you are that you have to chase down these little girls. <laughs> <laughs> the guy turns the vampires laughed at him. Like, dude, that, that dude just told you off. You gotta go chase him. Chase the tail. Oh, they're getting away. He's just like, oh. so, I'm done. And you guys like, I'm going home too. Actually, like, I'm leaving. He <laughs> 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 just flies off in the night. All turns off. <laughs> That's what pissed off Bass. Make some pissed off bat noises. 
So he flies off and then I obviously cry. Um, <laughs> vampire, the three vampires up there kind of look at you guys like, that guy's a loser, I guess. <laughs> mm-hmm. like, I haven't seen you around here before. We don't come here very often. Mm-hmm. Does he go to, a, what is it, the musical thing? Oh, the musical thing? Yeah, is that, is that where yeah, the, the, the one that we bought? Yeah. Something like that. Something like that. I'm watching the girls. Uh, that's uh, that's where we also had the food too, though, right? Yeah. 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 Right it's well. it's kind of a neutral, not exactly pro-human, but in the anti-human, it's like. Yeah, but we don't. They don't kill them already. Yeah. Oh, that's right. They're the meat sacks. Yeah. They yeah, the people are already dead or whatever. Yeah. So you have those available, so they're like, eh, yeah, I don't know, maybe. I'm to check out. There's a cute plan. Ladies at night. They have ladies at night. They have ladies. Retirees. Like a, uh... <laughs> <laughs> it's like the dance club they began in history, man. In your <laughs> <laughs> Whoa, they're look oh they're falling. <laughs> I probably will ask. Oh, she do you uh head. do you come here very often? Not I'm not trying to. Hey, your sister's here. Hi Gary. Hey Gary. Hello. <laughs> Hello. They just need your daughter. We have a whole thing. Yeah. Our family here. Yeah. Our yeah. name name family. So, yeah, they're like, well, you've been here a couple times. It's a pretty cool place. You know, you yeah. kind of look at the bouncer and like, it's a pretty cool place. You know. What's that? Uh, what's his name? Adam? Adam Noir. Noir. Yeah. You know, uh, is Adam Noir? He runs the place, right? Oh, yeah. He's usually around. I don't talk to him. Is he pretty easy to approach? Uh, we haven't had the guts to do it yet. Why not? We should have enough guts. We're glad you were here. <laughs> I hold up a bucket. We only have half a bucket. <laughs> <laughs> I'll be right back. Where are those girls? So, yeah, it's been like, people talk to me. And you can tell they're. This would be a cool place to hang out. As long as you don't mind the anti human part, these guys are probably more neutral. Mm-hmm. They're not like pro human all the way, but it's more like, well, it's a cool place to hang out. Just don't go yeah. somewhere. Else. Let's not get into politics. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. So, this is an independent bar. Yeah, they would, they're like, they're there. I got a guy. Music life. Who's playing? I do it. There's somebody in. I hear of him. I heard of him. Yeah. Special names, duet, or just a duet? It's a duet. I don't like those things. You want some red starburst? Starburst. 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 What? Ooh, nice guy. Oh. Sorry, do it with both hands. Three places of a mule. Eyes of the potato. Places of the mule. <laughs> there is barnyard man. <laughs> you guys are so screwed. Mm. The barnyard. Save us. I'm just looking at it's weird again. A, 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 a mm, it's a and tree right. You're in there. Make you go on in. Looks at him. Hey, they're cover charge. Especially if they say $3. Oh, holy wow. crap! And then, uh, you get a red You guys step up, he kind of hides you guys. Three dollar cover. For sure, we can manage it. I pull out Phil. <laughs> okay. Uh, that was good. Yeah. Anyway, uh, so you 
Liquor or something? Or? No, no, no. Dang. Well, I got 20 or whatever. A two dollar bill. Nah. Keep the change, you filthy animal. <laughs> Just enough to cover us. Oh. Yeah. So you put the blanket over us? Mm-hmm. <laughs> we'll put the blanket over him. He pulls out a machine and go. Uh, but he, but he, he kind of like, he's got like a headset on, and you hear him. See you on him. Okay. And you kind of like, curious, that one leaves though, right? Not this one. You don't know uh, okay. if they're leaving out the back door, or if they're not leaving at all, or if they're leaving through a chute. Graham. <laughs> window. That's sweet. Neat guys. Body parts slash into the river below. Yeah, you guys can win. <laughs> There's a table. Um, so you guys go in. When you walk in, you're in like hallway. And you're going in turns. Kind of on the outside wall. And it's very 90s metal. Blue light outside, there's more blue lights in here, rest lights. They look like they're like hanging from the ceiling. My body pictures aren't all the way hooked up, so they're at odd angles. We got like blue neon light around, like lining the hallway to show you where to go. You notice there's like, looks like they brought rod iron fencing from the cemetery and lined the hallway with it. Mm. There's like a little bit of smoke screen going on, like a fog machine or something. You don't know if it's a fog machine or somebody doing magic. You don't know. It's a frog machine. There's posters. Magical up. fog machine. Frog machine. Oh, yeah. Magic. Posters up, but they're kind of behind the glass or chicken wire. Mm-hmm. They have real chickens. Yeah. Some of the posters are for musical groups, but some of them are for like old movies, uh, lobby cars from like. Charles Frankenstein, <laughs> lobby cards from Lon Chaney Seniors, Hunchback and Notre Dame, um, lobby cards from like old Rudy Valentino movie, all kinds of old stuff. Right next to it is like Ten Lightning Black Strikes Ministry. <laughs> you know, mm-hmm. Okay, cool. And as you walk in, you can hear the um, beat of music. It sounds kind of like heavy, industrial. And as you kind of walk down this hallway and turn, there's a gate, and it looks like a cattle gate. Mm-hmm. And as you open it up, you kind of come into what looks like the foyer. So there's actually a room over here where there's like some chick who is probably either vampire or werewolf over there, and she's kind of behind the counter. So if you want to leave stuff there, she's got like lockers in the back. So it's kind of like a coat room, a mm-hmm. check room. Uh, there's people milling about out here, um, hanging out. Most of them look like your diehard punks or industrial heavy metal guys, you know. Guys with big spike mohawks and leather jackets with spikes everywhere. Studded leather, that kind of thing. Um, and as you kind of walk in through these people, they're just kind of milling about. Just kind of chatting. Um, most of them have a lot of severe makeup. Like either they look like she, they're like Susie and Banshee's kind of shirt or like they're rejects for a kiss. You know, they don't want to make up and all that. As you kind of walk past them, it looks like there's stairs that go down and it kind of looks like <clears throat> subway. But the roof kind of follows the stairs so you can't really see what's ahead. But the staircase kind of goes down. It's like that rod iron, like fire escape ring. Mm-hmm. And as you come in here, you look up, there is a ceiling with like corrugated metal but some of it's missing and you can see up into the darkness of the other two stories and over the thumping every once in a while you can hear the flutter of wings like they're pigeons or something up there up in the darkness so you hear that it's kind of like that as you kind of go through the stairs and start heading down it's kind of like you see the ceiling and as you go down you start seeing into the actual room it's a huge open area uh and as you get down to the bottom, you see what looks like a base set. So it opens up into an area. But there's also like, oh, like a, the bank teller pulls the velvet rope. Mm-hmm. They kind of, one leads off this way, one leads off up here. 
One leads to the back, the bike goes around the corner, to some stairs. There's scaffolds up there, there's people on scaffolding, there's people on catwalks up around the second, maybe in the third floor. Down here, it's like the dance floor. Uh, you walk in and it's just an open area. There's a mosh pit kind of going on up near the stage. There's actually tables and chairs on the outskirts. And then over to your right, there's like a raised, like the, there's a step up and more of the <laughs> floor of the foundry. Over there where some of the old machinery is, you see more tables. And there's one large table that's even like on a desk. And it's kind of like a big, long, almost like this, but it's an oak table, lots of chairs, and you see lots of people sitting up there, and they're kind of above everybody else. And up ahead of that, in like what looks like a throne made out of machine parts, that's up against like an open mouth of one of those vats. There's a guy sitting up there who's just kind of lounging in his chair, kind of lording over, it, just kind of enjoying. It. He's very straight faced. He's got a girl sitting on the chair with him with her arm around him, but he doesn't even say, seem to pay attention to her. There's people around him. It's almost like these people are there to bask in his glory, and he's just like, yeah, whatever. Um, and this would be at him. Behind him is a blue icy machine. Service. Sold from 7 Eleven. Killed that guy. Go for it. From a Kmart. I guess. Oh, you did. Okay. Well, for you guys, this is. I don't know. He's about six foot six. Foot six. Uh, lean but muscular. Kind of like Iggy Pop in a way. Really muscular. Has very broad shoulders. His arms are a little longer. You know, you can see like every vein popping out of his arms. Anastasia. Anastasia. Uh, He's got the lightning bolts shaved into the side of his head, and then the rest of his hair is kind of like long and ratty. He's got the collar, he's got the on around his neck, he's wearing leathers. Uh, the leathers are black, um, but they seem like they're patched together. So they're stitching everywhere. He's actually got scars with stitching around his chest, maybe up around his head. Um, his eyes got the dark eyeliner, and the dark, they're sunken. So they look even pitch black, except his eyes themselves are like an ice blue. So his white eyeballs and the ice blue really stand out. Uh, lots of piercings, and he's just kind of sitting up there. He does have what looks like a cane. Uh -huh. Maybe yeah. run. Uh, rivals. <laughs> and he's got like the, the black the cowboy boots. Another one. Yeah, mm -hmm. with the silver toe taps and all that stuff. And he's just kind of like leaning around. Uh, that looks like he's probably happy. Uh, as you guys were walking in, you could hear the music better as you were coming downstairs. It's kind of like came at the end, so it's got that industrial house vibe to it. But it sounds like the Shakespeare sisters are singing. It's like you can hear two two females, and it sounds like they're overlapping. Like they'll sing a line and sing a line, but they're kind of overlapping. And then when they sing together like a chorus, it's like... The first part of the chorus is really harmonious. It's like, wow, that's really beautiful together. But then the next, the next half of the chorus is like heavy. Mm -hmm. and it's discord. But it's still like, that's really awesome. It's not like, oh, that hurts my ears. It's like, oh, wow, that was really cool. And they switched that up. And as you get down here, you see the band on the stage. And there are, there are band members. There's a guy on keyboards, a guy on drums, a guy on bass, a guy, two people on guitar. There's one girl singing, both parts. Yeah. Um, this is who you see. She's a little bit, she's not like a bodybuilder, but she's very built. Chick from Mandalorian. Yeah. Gina Carano. Yeah. Gina Carano. Yep. Uh, she has a, when you get closer, you'll see a butterfly tattoo on her chest. Uh, Make real butterflies. Half of her hair is white, and the other half is like pure white, and the other half is black. And you notice where the stitching is, especially down in the center there. One half of her face is like tanner than the other. And same down around her chest. You can tell it's like either she's got the that skin disease where part of your pigmentation is off or <coughs> stitched together of two different people. 
So, but she's actually seen both parts. So, and it, above her in red neon, it says duet. Hmm. So, <laughs> interesting. Uh, she's wearing like a black leather, but it's more like the, like it shows here, kind of like the frills jacket, like the, I don't know what they call that, where it's like a fringe kind of hanging off. Leather, she, leather strip. She's dressed a little bit more like Lita Ford, <laughs> you know, <laughs> that kind of look. Mm-hmm. So, it's the heavy metal chick look. And, uh, yeah, it's, even though she's stitched together, it's still kind of like, well, she's still pretty good looking. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. So she's up there singing, and you realize she's doing both female parts. And as you kind of walk in, you see Adam Noir, and you see all kinds of people around. Uh, make a perception check. Just a regular... Oh, eight. Nope. 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 Made it. Nineteen. And the stage says you just got work. Oh. Welcome, Anastasia. Anastasia, I laughed out loud today at your cookie. Well, you know what I'm talking about. She shared it on Facebook. Oh. <laughs> I feel I feel like I'm forgetting something. Oh, <laughs> like man. An undead gingerbread man with the real teeth. <laughs> <laughs> cookies, <laughs> cookies in the oven for four hours. <laughs> <laughs> I laughed out loud. <laughs> Anybody make it? Yes. Okay. Two? Nobody else? All right. Not this cat. Okay. Um, you guys and Gideon, <laughs> he's like, you notice in some of the darker corners, there's like alcoves and there's some dark corners up in the scaffolding and stuff. You notice draining going on, which is not abnormal, but you do notice like there is a werewolf apparently up there feeding and they drain on pain. Mm-hmm. And they are essentially, they have somebody strapped to a wall and gagged, and they are basically ripping into them mm. with claws and drinking up blood. Uh, it's like, <laughs> you know, I'm feeding. Yeah. So it's like there's not a thing you can do about it. There's also vampires that are feeding in some of the corners. Their subjects do not seem to be overly willing. Vampires like tomato juice. Mm hmm. Mm hmm. Haters. Yeah, so, tomato plants in the corner doing horrible things to them. Bloody Marys. Um, you do see probably <laughs> you probably see a white in one corner grab some young guy by the face. The guy strapped to a chair is grabbing him by the face. Drains his youth, and when he takes his face away, the guy looks like he's probably takes his face away. away. So when he takes his hand away, the guy Holy takes, smoke face off. He looks like he's about eighty-five. Oh, geez. Um, yeah. yeah. So it's like bad night yeah, club. Yeah. didn't kill you. You'll be fine in about a month. Well, do they actually go back? Yeah, their age comes back. Oh, okay. Kind of like when you get drained, your blood will come back. Unless <laughs> your blood can't come back, and then you're just dead. A good way to do it, skies. <laughs> Yeah, I go rob a bank as an 85 year old man and then. Yep. A little yeah, for a few I didn't know. I'm 20 years old. Yeah. Hey, well, look at me. I don't care. I watch me, Red Dead Baby. The man on his side hustle. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Want to rob a bank? I'm your man. Feed me, Seymour. <laughs> feed me, feed more. What? So, anyway. There's obviously anti human situations going on. Yeah. But most of it. It's, it's kind of in the shadows, but they're not really hiding it. Most of the people are here for just dancing, having fun, whatever. Mm-hmm. So you guys walk in, and it looks kind of cool. You know, Gideon's like, oh, that's really good. Um, where do you guys go? What do you guys do? Well, I'm probably going to listen to the band to start with. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Gideon's going. Dig. <laughs> Joking on Starburst. Pull up. You up. To the stage, and there's like I said, there's the mosh pit going. <laughs> uh, yep, see you in a bit. He goes, well, he wades right into the mosh pit, so he's all in there doing this thing. Um, she plays maybe one or two more songs, probably finishes that song, plays one more, and then kind of announces on the microphone in a very normal voice. She says, We're gonna take a break, we'll be back in a little bit, have fun. 
and she kind of steps away from the mic and starts to walk toward the edge of the stage. Uh, the musicians kind of hang up their stuff and. I had to work that way. Yeah. I, were the other songs just as good, or yeah, yeah they were all actually pretty good. How did they compare to like when we had the, the bands at our place? Uh, with her singing capabilities, she would have nailed it. Okay. And with her band, they were really competent. I'll probably go and try and. So it was like we're gonna have a battle of the band. Bill and Ted are playing, and so is KMFDM. <laughs> okay. <laughs> so. So yeah, I'll try and uh, follow her around where it hit. Notice where she goes and try and it. I don't know if she's going in the back or if she's no, going she's just kind of coming off stage. <laughs> okay, so you can go over there. There are security guards on the floor. Life force. Life force. Life force. There are a couple of security guards. Kind of the right. They're more. Mm. We're not worried about. Mm-hmm. Same the white. Same the You're gonna rush no. them now. They're yeah. age. Yeah. Oh, yeah. age. You. Oh yeah, we're life force. Yeah. If you walk, uh, he's going away. They kind of eye you. But... Yeah, and I'm just kind of politely walking over towards her. Thing. And she kind of comes down, looks over. You notice, I don't know how tall you are. She's like six foot two. Mm-hmm. So she's a tall. Julie Strain. Anybody yeah, Julia Julie Strain. Strain? Yeah, yeah. Imagine her looking like that. Because she was really, she was like six foot one, six foot two, and kind of built. Imagine that physique. So she kind of looks over, notices you walking up, just kind of pauses or slows her walk and kind of waits for you to approach. Kind of nods to her and everything. It's like, it was a very impressive performance. Thank you. It was, uh, are you exclusive to uh, this place? Generally, but I have been known to uh, entertain elsewhere. And when she says that, she's like, I've been known to kind of look you up and down, mm-hmm. entertain elsewhere. I kind of look up over towards Adam Noir. He's like, so he's not like your master or anything in that. <laughs> he might think he is, but he's not. He goes, um, now my our place isn't as big as this place. No. No. By any means, yeah. I go, um, <laughs> if you're interested, there we got another place like to see about you performing at. Really? What was that? The musical vein. Hmm. Well, I heard about that. They just had a battle of the bands, didn't they? Uh, I mean, he's like, um, yes, but uh, I hardly compare to your music. Thank you. She kind of smiles. That's why I didn't enter. I'd probably kind of nod at that, but I mean, because uh, like, what's what was the one that... Or that with that one? Oh, man. it animates. Wasn't it? Oh. Uh, let me see. <laughs> Processing. Enhancing. 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 Quick. Like grab that. Grab the hourglass there and start spinning it in front of the camera. <laughs> the DM totally processes. Yes, Please wait while the DM processes. Wait time is six million hours and forty three minutes. Well, either way, it was. Uh... <laughs> Maybe. 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 He had pictures of all the bands. Yeah. Or oh, no, funny. There was the, the God Girl band, which you knew one of those. Yeah. I think they won. This is the one. It's, it's the animate band that you saw. They were like, the yeah. Real. Oh, yeah. This one has like the, the demons and the Oni and all that. And this is the one that was more like your classic metal. I can't remember if it was these guys. Yeah, it was those guys. It was these guys. Mm-hmm. I thought so. So who was it then? Uh oh. Hang on there, but I have it right here. The band is Wow Stallions. <laughs> <laughs> Handsome. Yeah. Handsome dude. <laughs> Actually, they were pretty popular. Mm-hmm. Handsome, the rebirth. 
They're afterbirth. Yeah, they're afterbirth. <laughs> it's an afterbirth. Yeah. Okay, uh, this one with the goth chicks <clears throat> is the witching hour. And you knew one of them. Uh, oh, this one was the resurrection men. Mm -hmm. They were kind of oingo boingo. Yeah. Yeah. Velvet tapestries. That's the one that was right. Yeah, these yeah. guys the one. And then this was in animation. Okay. That was the animates. Yeah. yeah, it was Velvet Tapestries. So how did they how did they compare though? Pretty close. Pretty okay. close. Uh let's see. There is more goth rock, so it's kind of Susie and the Bay of Cheese being mm. secure. But you know, as far as like talent, pretty Pretty close. I mean, don't be mad at it. Like been doing it a lot longer. That's my thought. But not anymore. And it's a different style of music, but yeah. Okay. Well, I'll probably kind of go, well, well, the tapestry was the one that won. Very, very Is that talented. the one that uh, we know that's got the Rosh Hashanah? Uh, not as good. No, she wasn't part of the bands. I think she was actually part of the clinic. I think she was going to the clinic or something. She wasn't part of the band. But yeah. I kind of mentioned, like I said, I kind of mentioned that band and everything. Yeah, she's like, oh, yeah, I've heard of them. They are pretty good. Very talented. So they won the battle, huh? Yes. <laughs> anyway, we're always looking for some new venues. Would you be interested? Right away for engagement? We'll see. Yeah, she I... kind of looks over and for Adam Noir. Um, she kind of glances his way, looks at you. Uh, you guys, I'm assuming, notice that Adrian is talking to her. Probably not. Uh, I, I, I didn't pass a damn thing yet. So. Yes. <laughs> yeah, I, like, I probably don't even know what I'm talking to her. <laughs> the dance floor is separated, so you're like, there's no music. Everybody's gone. You're like, yeah. you obviously know that it's over and you can oh. over and see what you want. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, you get old, you get old. Are you joining him or are you just going to stay back? Um, what kind of intelligence do I have? <laughs> Because Gideon's probably going to kind of walk over that way. I don't know if he'll walk up behind him. I'm kind of sage. You know, but he'll go off. I'm going to walk up. Go to empty ta I'll find an empty table. Yeah. I'll go with him and be an empty table. I mean, find an empty table. Sure, you can. We need a table. <laughs> this is the weirdest cup holder. It looks yeah. like. Oh, oh my God. God. Get that out of here. It's cold. Get <laughs> that cup out of my cup. <laughs> that's not a cup holder. That's a cup bar. My God. Okay. Well, if you go get an empty table or look for one, get in over with you. And you're going to go with that? Yep. I'm not too sure. You got to see her. Yep. Okay. So, anyway, she kind of looks over at Noir, and as she does, she probably glances that way. He's kind of watching the conversation. Okay, I would. she glances up at him, I glance up as well, just to see if he... And he just kind of... Hmm. He's not exactly... It doesn't look like the jealous boyfriend type, mm -hmm. but it is like, who's she talking to? Hmm. And he's interested. Okay. Yeah. Well, I kind of like flip her a card to the uh, musical bay and everything. It's like... Okay. Well, if you're interested, contact us uh, here. All right, damn it. Yeah. And, uh, nice. and of course, if you have any problems, I kind of glance back at him. Price is never a bother. <laughs> she takes the card, like a regular business card. Mm -hmm. well, we won't have any problems. Down. Ooh. That's huge. That's her boobs, if you didn't know. Yeah. Boobs. We don't want cleavage. Oh, never oh, mind. <laughs> Go ahead. got my number. The credit card. Let me pull that out of my hand. Back in here. Back in here. Pulls out the moose head. I gotta get a new ass. I gotta get a new ass. 
Uh oh, I'm asleep. <laughs> really obscure note. Uh, yeah, she tucks it down in her cleavage and says, Well, this is a good topic. Don't stop adding it and squirrel. <laughs> <laughs> And she says, uh, so are you just staying out talent here, or? That's always my first priority. So I was doing that to speak time. with, uh, what's his name? About some other matters. Adam? Yes. You familiar with him? I take it. Do you, you like, like him? More than you want me to like him? Intimately. We're... On and off again, boyfriend and girlfriend have been for centuries. And sometimes it's still girls. Or arts. <laughs> yeah. 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 Like, All right, you're the boy. What's <laughs> uh, the flavor this week, then? For this century. This week? I'm not sure yet. And she actually looks you up and down again and says, I've decided. Oh, you notice she kind of looks over where they went to the table and was kind of like, like, I'm not sure. And she's shopping. Yeah. Just because blind spirit doesn't mean it's, it's not there. <laughs> <laughs> this isn't really a like, <laughs> damn, it's got a blue nail. <laughs> I gotta go. Talk to Maria. I had her. <laughs> It's a new one. It's a new one. <laughs> you remember Mario? I know, but yeah. I said Mario. It's, it's, it's Mario. He's hot. It's me, Mario. It's a good. Get some. We <laughs> down that fight. Sorry. <laughs> she, yeah. What'd you say? I think I was, uh, was going to say, not to be misunderstood. I like my business first and foremost. <laughs> I like my business shaken, not stirred. <laughs> Yeah. Oh, it's like I can't get anything done. Shake it. Right? Here. Oh, here. I'm sorry. Oh. Uh, excuse me. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I understood. Um, oh, did yeah. you want to I know. Adam now, or do you want to join your, your friends? Do you, uh, or do you want them to join yes. us? Oh, that was creepy as fuck. You're lying to me. <laughs> It's a good question. He goes, uh, if you don't mind, I'd like to go speak with some of my friends first. Well, I'm just going to wander over to the bar and have a drink. Um, when you're ready, let me know and I'll take you. Does uh, Adam get a little worried out with large groups? She looks over. Not nah, really. He's pretty cold in that aspect. Doesn't really care. I kind of nod. We'll be back in a minute. Okay. As you kind of walk walk away and kind of glance at Adam, you do see there's like five or six people up there talking to him. Mm-hmm. And uh, he seems to be not an animated, not an animated discussion. Ah! Uh, uh, Get the uh, dice. <laughs> Get yourself, sir. I did. But at least not on the animate's side. He's just kind of sitting there in his chair, looking at the sky, hand on his cane, like, uh-huh. The other guy seems to be a little more animated. Yeah, and it's like this. They're lobbyists. Yeah. <laughs> and it looks like this guy, the American-American, uh, dressed in kind of like sort of the hip-hop clothes of the 90s with a little bit of metal mm-hmm. thrown in, and he's got, like, some people with him. And he seems to be talking for the group. And he's over there. You can't hear him over the hustle. Tell him, man, Wakanda, man, it's going to be big. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> it's it's kind of like, oh, man, you got to understand. It's like this. Like, they've been trying to do this. And Adam's just like, I see. Mm-hmm. Okay. Like, just a cool customer. So uh, they seem to have a conversation. They're kind of into it. So you go on over to the table, like, as you're saying. Mm-hmm. So. So, you guys all have a seat. I'll, just, uh, I'll, I'll, I'll bow to her when she leaves. Okay. When you guys walked in, I meant to tell you, when you guys walked in, obviously people were like, oh, who's the new people? Most of them actually looked at Wally for a minute. Like, party favor? And then they kind of like, 
No, 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 I don't think so. Never mind. <laughs> Wally is more than human. Yeah. More human than you. You, you look more like a than human. So, so he's got an like, ooh, a party favor. Oh, never mm-hmm. mind. He's got a staff. Forget it. Oh, oh. Yeah, <laughs> Yeah, I, I, I uh, kind of drifted over to the bar and ordered a drink and just kind of not leaning against them, just kind of keeping a survey of the of the. He went to talk to you after that thing. They went to a table. Are you going to yeah. stay at the bar? Or? I'm going to stay at the bar and kind of keep the survey. Okay. So as you go over the table, uh, you guys are sitting there. And well, I like you really up. have waitresses or waiters. It's like you want to drink or get your own mm-hmm. or go go grab somebody. Yeah, but you're just sitting there. So you actually probably like a cigarette. <laughs> He's like, <"Tch>, I hate that. <laughs> so he just kind of like. Wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Lights of the like, like two dragons, like, two 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 like, no, you can lie to lie. Yeah, okay. It's just big flame. Yeah. Fire! Yeah. Fire bad. <laughs> uh, I think it's just came in the So anyway, you wish you would. Yeah, as I come up, I'd probably go, well, I've got us a way in for Adam. We wish to speak to him. I'd like to get an Adam. That'd be great. Any Adam? That'd be cool, man. Well, you should say something. So, what did we know about Adam Noir? What from last time we played? Uh, basically, he's the king of the complex in the city. He's a <laughs> human. Um, you do know that he's not just, he's not one to just kill indiscriminately. He has a temper, but he would rather control the herd and what they do than. Really, just outright slaughter. But did he? Did um the way the people that were killed mm-hmm. were they killed in the same OT that he does? Oh no, that's another thing about Adam. He's more about maneuvering people on a chess people on a chessboard. Okay. Chessboard. Now, if he does get angry, he is not above ripping somebody in half. I mean, he is very strong. He's very violent. But he'd rather just let other people do. Uh, as far as the Jake thing, he would be. Oh, this is one thing Romero told you. He would be thrilled at the loss of life, the, like the human life. Like, yeah, put the fear of God into him. You're, if you're trying to impress me, it's not impressive. Do that to a bus full of nuns, that would be impressed. Mm-hmm. Is that strikes fear into people. He's that type. So. Um, so what? What information do we have from? That dang hat on him. What I can't remember exactly no, what. Nothing really. He's he's an it. He's old. He's powerful. He's the king of the complex. Uh, he kind of can do what he wants. Um, you do know that he is originally from Germany or Austria. Austria. Um, uh, there was one note that it is rumored that he actually. Had a tryst with Mary Shelley Wollstonecraft, and that's where she got the idea for the Frankenstein novel. That's a rumor that was going around. Some say that the room, the her novel was actually partly based on true events, and that he is the Frankenstein monster, mm-hmm. like the original Frankenstein monster, the original flesh animate. But it could all be just rumors. I don't remember. Her. The one we played last year. What was her reason for coming here? Uh, he may have been looking like the the killings, mm-hmm. the serial killer killings.
and the by the place burned down. It was a bar, gunfire broke out, and coming to center stage. <laughs> Sunday, Sunday, Sunday. <laughs> Sorry, the echo is awesome. I know. Uh, yeah, and then blame had somebody blame you or you might have just not cared you don't know okay. i think the idea was to come here and find out what kind of question him and find out exactly what he knows about it if any because the gunfight and the fire at jake's seems like small potatoes but the mutilated bodies that seems like something he could do but he's too smart to leave it out and what was the gunfight at Jake's? Uh, apparently, uh, Jake's, there, about 7 o'clock, there was gunfire erupted, and the building caught fire. And by the time the cops got there and the emergency services, it was pretty much in blaze. Uh, there were some people who got out, but they figured the death toll was about 25 people. Mm-hmm. So it was like, oh my, oh my god. <laughs> the place burned down with people trapped inside. And it was a human bar. It wasn't kin. So it was just kind of a, ooh, that was a tragic loss of life. That was horrible. Well, that's kind of the complexes thing to do if they have a point, or maybe not. Maybe they just did it for fun. But you were blamed for that and the mutilation murders, and they're like, okay. They- oh, I got blamed for that, too? Yes. Yeah, you're one in question for the mutilated bodies and Jake's. Okay. They, they said you're one in question for both. So for, for somebody to tie you to those two... If it was something that Adam Noir is doing, Romero was like, eh, he can blame you. Don't know. Because he doesn't give a rat's ass. Mm-hmm. He could just blame you for it. You don't know. And I think your idea was to kind of talk to him first and kind of feel him out, rule him out, or not, okay. or decide how you're going to deal with it if it is him. Okay. And then the other option was that somebody, these fed guys in the police department, which you think might be target alpha, they could be doing it too. Mm-hmm. But you don't know which way, and I think you just, honestly, I think you just pick one. Right, well, who wants to go talk about the with me? Do we have anything that we can maybe determine whether or not he's lying or anything? I don't have anything other than mesmerize. I have shooting head, does that help? Yeah, it does, but <laughs> probably not here. It's not for really. mental map. Do you have anything, Dennis? What? Let's see if he's lying or not. <clears throat> no. I have a skill lying. I could probably use that to see if he is lying with Fratell's. Now, if I start my work, danger sense, is that like an ongoing thing? For that is an ongoing thing. I'm so, going to kick that in now. Actually, that's... Oh, yeah. It's not a bad idea. Oh, yeah. yeah. I think we're about to get in danger. Danger, danger, danger. Now, do we have to roll to start it? That just... No, nope, you just spend your humanity. Okay. 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 That's a little Australian. comes out. Hey, you're only that fella looks dying. <laughs> danger, danger, danger. <laughs> kind of irritating, but you know. The higher the level, the quieter it is. Yeah. Danger. <laughs> it's basically, the score of your danger sense, if there's something kind of that could be happening, I'll have you roll your danger sense to okay. see if you pick up on it. To activate it, it's on. Okay. But it'll be, you'll have to roll that and see if you pick up on it. <laughs> Yes, right. Oh, that's what it sounds like when Stu turns his on. Everybody takes a step back. Looks like a proton back starting on. He has a major accelerator strapped to his back. Alright, so, so you have major sense, and Gideon is pretty good at lying, so he might be able to pick up on tells maybe if he starts lying. Do you have a smell or anything, Dennis? <laughs> Magic's yeah. No, I don't know how it works. Yeah, I don't know. I can't remember. So we didn't have Jesse. Yeah, if Jesse was here, she'd be like, oh, that dude's lying. Yeah. yeah. That guy's evil. These people are evil. Well, where's his girl? Well, she'd probably I, be I, overwhelmed at this I'm point. I'm like, uh, I think I'm in hors d'oeuvre. <laughs> <laughs> Yum. 
So me, Gideon, Shiro. What's your name? Shiro? Yeah, Shiro. Yeah, you gotta go, you gotta go up to him. Well, how many do you want to go up? I don't know. I don't think it matters, so. So all of you. We can all go up or. Yeah. I'll go up. Okay. the bar, so you want to stay there or you want to come up with everybody? Well, back at the bar while you guys discuss that. Wally disappears. <laughs> Oof. Uh, did you see the description of Duet? Did you see the picture? Uh, Black and white hair? I'm not doing it, so. Yeah, you're lost. Yeah, this is Duet. Oh, yeah. Okay. <laughs> duet. Oh, yeah. You saw her talking to Adrian for a bit, and Cheryl was over there too. The other guys got a table, so you can see where they went. Uh, as they finish up their conversation, she heads over to the bar and pretty much walks up, orders a drink, and as she does, she kind of glances over to you. She kind of doesn't walk her up right next to you, but like a space away, um, and kind of looks at you and says, not sitting with your friend? Just giving a bit of a bit of a bit of a bit of something? She actually, the bartender comes up, puts your drink down, and kind of close to you, we're like yeah. between you, and she reaches across and leans over so you get a good view. She's like, different view, huh? Oh. And takes a shot, sets it down, taps the bar twice, mm -hmm. the bartender kind of like comes over, goes to refill it. Mm -hmm. I'll, I'll, I'll just put my fingers uh, you know, um, Captain Bar to rights indicating a, a, a double of the same thing. Okay. All right. Uh, he kind of looks back and nods and brings back two shot glasses and puts it down. She's like, Are you on the lookout for something? <laughs> this is apple juice. <laughs> <laughs> oh, it's just a workout. Enjoy the set. It's salt water. <laughs> <laughs> Enjoy the set. Good. Good. Uh, your friend over there might need a place to uh, musical maid. I'm assuming you know of it. He's got a good ear. <laughs> Several. He keeps them all in the pocket. <laughs> <laughs> he gets, like, holds up the string. What's that? Check, 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 check. <laughs> check, 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 check. There's like thumbs on the other one. They'll go, Whoa. I'm all bones. I'm all ears. <laughs> <laughs> They have uh, general, general similar tastes. Good. Well, I guess we'll see what he offers. Might play. It'd be fun to try out a different crowd. I was about to get new fans. And you are. <laughs> Bless you. Tell me about it. Need love. And you. And she kind of takes her double shot and kind of looks back to the table and says, she kind of looks up towards where Adam is sitting and she's like, well, wait for them to see if they want to talk. I guess you, they're going to talk to Adam. Are you uh, going? Let's just put a sack on the table. Yeah. I'll get the quick notes. All right. And she kind of goes around the table to see if they're going to sit over the table. She'll make small talk if you want to say anything else. We'll wait for Brad back to see if he's going to say more. Anybody with a signaler? All of a sudden, Stu's shoulder. <laughs> I got this, man. Want to get a cigarette? <laughs> I'm showing my high beam. <laughs> she might show you her high beam. Yeah, I have a good there. Flash him. Hey, now I will do a windshield wiper impersonation. Thank you very much. <laughs> Where'd the water come from? That's <laughs> my drool. That's uh, the drool. I'm trying to wipe it off with my face. <laughs> uh, it's just, I just get wetter. <laughs> like all over, it's weird. It's, it's so weird. strange. It's so strange. Oh, look, man, let's have sex. 
They can, they just can't. Not normally. Not breed or anything like that. <laughs> well, most of them can. <laughs> yeah, you're gonna make a Volvo. <laughs> Congratulations, I'm about to got, be Audi. I got 16 Yugos at home, I have to be happy. I gotta feed two Volkswagen Beetles. Are you gonna get into the family? I let you go get out and get some. It's like this diesel life. <laughs> you're so hot when you're just as mini bus. Now you're a whole bus. Now you're a whole bus. Now you're a city bus. This ain't cool, man. This ain't cool. Oh, shut the hell up, but I hear like a. Just came off the assembly line itself. <laughs> So do you say no more? Okay. Well, I probably kind of talked a little bit more. I was like, how do we want to handle this? Because I don't think we need, we shouldn't be forceful on this. Ooh, that'd be bad idea. Yeah. I could walk up and punch him right in the forehead. That would be forceful. That would be, that's forceful. Oh, that's forceful. Right, right. <laughs> but it's going to be better to have a better accent. Maybe you could just ask him if he's heard anything, like, you know, word on the street. Not blame him, but his, does he know who might be hiding? Kind of play up to him. Yeah. Play up to him and then just ask him. Yeah. For yeah. whatever information he might have. Might be the best way. Who's blaming you for this stuff? And yeah, kind of like, well, I know you're the man on the street and you hear a lot of things and you seem to be pretty smart in the know. This is this is how we're gonna say hello. We're gonna milk you for information. <laughs> <laughs> so pull it out. And it also do it's okay. Mimi! Mimi! It's utterly ridiculous. I was just getting ready to say it. Stop! <laughs> 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 No, um, I will. Perhaps we could even play up to. Not that you're arguing about what happened, but you just like to have your own the card to things you do. Hmm? He's, he's anti human, so perhaps you're just wondering who's doing this in your name and kind of pisses you off. You know, we have that you're not pro. Make sure he make sure he doesn't think I'm pro. Yes, pro pro human. That's easy. None of us here exactly. Well, you're human. Hmm. What? <laughs> hmm. Okay. We'll just kill Wally in front of him. Now he's in. <laughs> Wally is a wizard. He is not human. Oh, that won't work then, will it? No. We can get this guy. Good <laughs> Wally. <laughs> So, okay. Well, I just say, just, I guess, not be forceful then. Don't, don't try and tip the scales or whatever. Use tag. Same, but at the same time, last time I had tried tag, I put it, I had it in a bowling bag. <laughs> right. Tag is obviously violence. But at the same time, he may expect something different. He seems like he should try to kill. Okay. No, I am merely saying. By his mannerism, be <laughs> bored. Is he like a girl really lord type thing? thing? I am saying, if there's a different way to approach him, that might be a good idea. That's about from the ceiling. Yeah, maybe we can do that. Instead of kissing his ass, maybe if you just tell him, "Hey, I'm pissed off about this," you know, you know anything about it? Not that what happened. No, but I'm not blaming you. But I'm thinking you probably heard something because you're a guy in the know. Okay. Maybe show him that you're not afraid of him, but you're not against him. Maybe that'll work. Yes. He looks up. That the guy who was talking to him is kind of standing off to the side, mm -hmm. and he's just kind of talking to somebody else. And it's like, yeah, like he's kind of yes, those are yes men. Yeah. yeah. I'm just kicking an ass. Right? Or yuppies, yeah, excuse something. me. That's what it looks like. Maybe I've been worse than a vampire yet. Please. I'm mad as hell. And I'm not gonna take it anymore. These dogs are all wanting to be in his lap and be petted. Yeah, we can lick our own nuts. Right. I'll dip his bottle. I will show him. All of a sudden, you do that over there. Like a black hole. Singularity. He's in the world. He's up here. Are you mocking me? Are you mocking me? Okay. Whoa, whoa, whoa. 
Let's head over to the bar and okay. talk to the wife. I'm going to start playing the Imperial Death March. <laughs> 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 so it's real tinny. And... <laughs> All right, so you guys walk over to the bar, do it, kind of standing there, just waiting for you. Obviously, watching you walk up. She mm-hmm. stands up. Is that Noelle? Is she over there by Wall? Yeah, she is. You're right, pal. Like right a... on town. Yeah, man. Yeah. We're partying after this. <clears throat> uh, what do you have mind? Well, we can bring you up and introduce you. I would appreciate that. Okay. Yeah. Are you sure you want to come, Wally? I think Wally's drunk. With power. Yeah, I'll, I'll tag up. All right. Let's get right on my shoulder. Like a little baby bear. Yeah, well, I'm not going <laughs> to lay my head on him. Put your head on my shoulder. You can put it like, like one of the seats. Take your arm off and put it in my trunk, dude. Slice. <laughs> Put your head on my shoulder. 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 Put your head on Puts down her shot glass and kind of says, like, well, follow me, boys. And she starts walking on the chat and then shoots you. <laughs> yeah. Uh, and she walks ahead of you. She does have seduction. So it's like, you know, you, you could very well easily be hypnotized by her hips as she walks. I'm sure. Yeah. But, is. yeah. yeah. So, but she, she walks up and uh as you kind of follow behind and as you approach the table, she's kind of, kind of holds her hand up like we hear she steps up. Adam kind of looks at her, and for the first time you see him, he's like straightens up, like he's got his leg over the chair, like Jim Morrison or something like that. She walks up, he kind of puts his leg down, takes the cat cane, puts it across his lap, and kind of smiles at her. It's like, oh, oh he has emotion. He has yeah. more than one. <laughs> so he kind of looks at her, and she kind of walks up, and they're obviously flirting with each other and she leans over and says something to him yeah, he kind of looks in your direction and points your way and he kind of looks that way and you see him actually grin which is somehow attractive and frightening at the same time and he kind of grins as he looks at you guys kind of flicks his eyes this way without turning his head he's like Kind of motion you guys come up and she steps off the with side. one finger. Yeah, that's a strange piece. Sign. Mm-hmm. Come here. <laughs> so he motions you up and you guys can approach. Uh, as you walk up there, like all the people at the table are various kin, most of them look like animates of some kind. And it's like that's actually one who's kind of good looking, very well shaped. Uh, it's a female mannequin. Ooh. Like a fashion mannequin. Hey, man. And she's got a little go, bit man. of a lower humanity, so and when she is, she's giving you the eye. <laughs> <laughs> no, she, taps you on she actually, as you guys walk up, you know, she actually kind of looks at you like, oh, ooh. So, you know. You and I used to be in the same display. Do you remember? Yeah, yeah. What do you mean? word to me. <laughs> <laughs> uh, you do see a couple vampires. Uh, there are some animates, other animates. There's one or two that look like maybe flesh animates, but there's one that's very gray skinned. Uh, she looks like a stone animate. Um, He's totally stone. Yeah, he is, dude. Oh, I will, I will talk Rope. to him. Hello, my name is Rope. I'm here to uh, protect you. Yeah. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you do see a couple werewolves and. Uh, Aside, up up next to him where that the black guy was there's him there's four others uh <laughs> look about like him uh one white guy and three other african-american guys and they all kind of look like werewolves now that you get close they look like werewolves and the guy who was talking has like a hat kind of sideways and he's got the big jewel j on a chain and then uh He's got like the, the MC Hammer pants, you know, that kind of thing. Now this is the guy that was talking to him. This is the guy that was talking to him, all anim- animated. Right. Uh, there's two vampire girls with them, and there is a white, uh, male white with them, who looks more hip hop 
than grunge, like mm. Gideon. It's vanilla whites. Vanilla whites. White white baby. White white baby. Yeah. 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 <laughs> turtles. Yeah. So anyway, uh, yeah, they're out there kind of seeing off to the side, like you'll be old and you wait there. So anyway, you guys kind of approach, walk up, and in a very deep and elegant voice, he actually wouldn't expect it. He's like, Well, what can I do for you, gentlemen? And I kind of nod to him. I go, I appreciate this moment you've given us to speak. Mr. Noir. Well, say what you will, Mr. Sorry. Sorry. Hmm. I kind of, I kind of actually try and eye him a little bit. Yeah. Uh, anybody can win a roll persuasion. Uh, Dean is going to roll if you have skill line. You do that. Oh, here's persuasion. Uh, I would allow persuasion. No, I thought you said persuasion. Oh, you roll, or do you mean perception? Oh, perception. perception. Oh, like, Wait, what does persuasion, persuasion have to Sorry. do with it? Please don't kill me. <laughs> yep. <laughs> I got a watering eye. <laughs> <laughs> I'm like, he's got that cookie mustard head, baby. <laughs> 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 I'm going to turn the power Wait, hold on, hold on. That was just an image I did not need to see in my head. I can see you like, hold on. I can't give me the sign. I'm all this me. I'm going to make me the second. One. Two. Three seconds. Ah, oh, ah, oh, ah. Oh. <laughs> Okay. <laughs> oh, we're easily entertained by the puppet chicks. Yay! <laughs> Can I make it? Anybody make it? Nope. 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 Uh, he didn't roll a one. Oh, it's fine. So he's like, he says, oh, I'm sorry, that's interesting. And you kind of eye him. <laughs> Gideon just kind of catches your eye. He's like, and uh, let's see. Adam's like, looks at Gideon, looks at you, he's like, yes, I'm familiar with the report. I've been informed of it. Interesting. What's the report for that, baby? News report. Ready to see me? Not long ago, I guess you were blamed for some crimes. Or wanted in connection with some crimes. Is that what you hear about? Accusations can be somewhat misleading. Mm -hmm. Indeed they can. I was hoping perhaps since uh, you do seem to be the man around this area, if you don't mind me saying. It's true. Perhaps you might know a thing or two. Well, as a matter of fact, I do. It's actually fortuitous that you came to see me. You see, people are always trying to gain my favor. They're always wanting under my umbrella of protection, or to work with me, or do things for me. I don't know why, I guess it's a charm. Maybe it's a, a gift, I don't know. But, I've never met you, I've never encountered you. However, the people who assaulted the club, Jake, Jake's, are right here. And he motions to that guy with the J and his gang, and they're all like, they're standing there like, and you hear J, like the guy with the J, like, are you fucking kidding me? He's like, you see, they wanted my favor. They attacked Jake's. Cost of human life was quite impressive. Yes, in their eyes, hoping to gain, uh, I don't know, space under my roof. And the guy kind of looks a little uneasy, like, well, yeah, we did that for you. He's like, yeah, that was sweet. 
It was sweet. And he took the credit or got the credit. And that makes you angry, doesn't it? He's like, I become solid. He's like, yeah, right. It makes me angry. We did that. And he, this guy's getting the credit for it. He's like, is that a bad thing? He's like, yeah, we want you to know that we did that for you, man. We did that for you. And he's like, so you said. And you didn't do it. Obviously. Because he's here. And you're upset that you're getting blamed for something you didn't do. And you notice, like, everybody in this area, and, like, even with the band not playing, most of the people in the bar are, like, Looking your way, solid and I basically and you can Adam's voice. voice actually like because the acoustics is the same boundary and the way his voice is kind of carries. And he's like, so we have kind of a conundrum, a very entertaining and very interesting conundrum. And I've decided that there's only one way to settle it. And he smiles, and everybody's like, he's like, you didn't commit this crime. You want your name clear. I understand and I'm, I apologize I don't know who blamed you for it but I understand you would be very upset about that I would be too in your shoes here's the man who did it so he is the reason you were blamed for a crime you didn't commit you are upset because he got credit for a crime you committed hmm let's see it's almost even. I kind of uh, tap my cane and kind of lean on it a little bit. I go, your manipulations do not interest me. Well, it's not my manipulations, it's entertainment. Your entertainment does not interest me either. I am. You already spoke, you already, uh, you already pretty much just said that you don't know who is the one that blamed me. No. No, I didn't. I kind of look over to her. I kind of, not look directly <laughs> over, kind of, kind of, kind of try to eye over to Gideon. He kind of shrugs like, he's telling the truth. Okay. I go, <clears throat> it doesn't matter to me who killed who at Jake's. It's irrelevant. Getting vengeance on them does me no good. No, no. I understand that. But if this man is going to be under my protection, I have the right to settle any disputes. And he has a dispute with you and your crew, I assume. We're going to have trial by combat. You against them. Team A, Team B. And everybody's kind of like starting to clap. And he's like, no final deaths. Do not do a final death in my presence or you will suffer the same fate. Death, however, comes to us all once in a while. Trial by combat. And he stands up and everybody's like, yes. And he says, clear a path. And you are moving chairs away and they're starting to line like an outline in an arena. And he says, j Dog, you and your crew take on Mr. Vasari and his crew. Whoever is left standing gets to walk out of here scot-free. If you and your crew are the victors, more of you are left standing before anyone submits, fine. You can come under my protection. I'll give you a little odd jobs, whatever it is you want. You can lick my boots whenever you feel free. You, if your group remains standing or is victorious or gets the other side to just submit, you walk out of here free. And I will make sure that whatever you need to do to clear your name, it's clear. And you don't even owe me any favors. I don't think I want to owe you any favors, period. And you're not going to have to. I don't think I want to play your fucking game. If you don't play my game... How about we just fight right now, me and you? Are you sure about that? I don't know. <laughs> I wouldn't be. It's much easier to fight him. He says, let me show you why. He looks around. There's some guy at the bar who's like, standing with a vampire. He's like, need a chair? Anybody need a chair? 
You look like you could. Oh, you'd like a seat, huh? He looks over, looks at the guy, uses body control where he can make that guy assume any form he wants. That's it. That's it. Order of Darkness, let Okay, yeah. Uh, he basically looks at the guy. The guy's bones start to break, and he starts screaming in pain as his body breaks itself into the form of a chair. And the guy is just in anguish and passes out in the form of a chair. And was he a kid? Nope. He was oh, human. All right. And he's like, there's your seat. You can take it. Do you want to fight me? Or would you rather fight him? Or you can fight all of us. Well, all of them. Mr. Masari, I trust you. Looks like your group. Hey, dog. Thanks for doing that. You're probably going to die. These guys look like they're pretty vicious. And they look like they've got some experience, too. As a matter of fact, I'm more impressed by them than I am with you. And he's like, but, but you are. He's like, no, 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 no. Trial by combat. Get in that ring. Prove your worth. I lean over and say, prove your battles. Like, is there a you, you can take the clear path to the well yeah the, the people scooted away yeah. tables and stuff and they're kind of like in circles it's, it's I mean, are we already in it or is it uh all you gotta do is walk off the dais at the end of the table and you're in it uh, actually i believe i have uh some kind of acrobatics oh yeah i think you do Hmm. Might be just or just use a martial arts martial arts and just yeah. do a flip okay. off into the into the space okay uh what's your martial arts uh and I, 79 okay i forgot about this one thing i read about we didn't have to make half those rolls if you have a 30 in something you are competent so mm. like to do a flip if you have martial arts of <laughs> yeah. you can do a flip. You don't have to roll. Okay. If there's a chance you might fail, like Gideon trying to see if he's lying, even though he has a 60, he needs to roll just to make sure he can catch it. Yeah. But if it's like, I need to lie my way out of this traffic ticket, if he has a 60 against a human, he's going to lie his way out of the traffic. 60 or 30? 30 is the limit, but he has a 60 in line. Okay. So if he's trying to lie to a human cop, He's confident. He's going to lie his way out of it. If he's trying to lie to a kin or one of you guys, he's going to have to roll because you guys are going to, I know you're a good liar. <laughs> that kind of thing. So if you have a 30 in something, you're confident. So you can go ahead. If you're not, if you're attacking, you have to roll. Right. So if you're trying to flip and kick somebody, you have to roll. No, I, I was just but, wanting to make you know, a, a flashy. You're good. So, and right. I, I did say I had, in, I had in, in, thrown uh, claws into too, the so. middle of them, or no, into the ring, the ring, in, into the ring. Okay, yeah. And Stood will just turn and start walking down the ring. Okay. Uh, <laughs> I, wish, I really wish you wouldn't jump right into the middle of things before I can do something. <laughs> and then I had a question just for my insight. <laughs> so now powers do not affect other kin, right? They can. not they can. They can. If you roll. Okay. Yeah. Well, I took well, a like, lot. Well, let me put it this way. Like, claws will yeah, affect other can. Armor will defend you against other can. Right. I don't know, like, if you wanted to use... Okay, does. Into the middle of the... Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I got it. When they come in? Got it. Yeah. All right. That's easy. Touch your bikes. You switch is against other kin. Edges of law evolved along with kin to facilitate survival while preying on humanity. Edges that are used against other kin are very unreliable in their effects. 
Unless stated otherwise in the edge description, a minus 50 modifier is applied to escape rolls to all kin when attempting to escape the effects of an edge. So like That's combination, minus, they get minus, they get a plus 50 bonus or a minus 50, minus 50 to their roll. So it's yeah. like, yeah, that didn't work. Uh, well, the, only the same thing works both yeah. ways. Both ways. The only exception to this is when the edge is used against a kin whose humanity is a hundred. In this situation, it's like you're using against a human. Okay. So then I have a question: If I'm incorporal, I can't use the claws of the sword or anything, right? I have to be corporal before that to work. Right. Yes. So. You have to be a physical being. Right? And remember, I told you I spent the point. I became yeah. corporal. Yeah. I remember. So like armor will protect you against kin attacks. Claws um, will obviously yeah, hurt. The kin. physical stuff still works. But yeah. like if you want to do mesmerize, it's going to be really tough. Yeah. But as far as all out battle, that's it. So touch of ice. The damage each will level of the victims. Fails fit roll. But it's a thirty one. So that means. They would get a plus 50 to the roll to resist it to their fit, pretty much. Yeah. <clears throat> Does luck come in to work with combat? No. <laughs> kind of your unskilled stuff. Unless, like, if you don't have a pistol <laughs> and you pick up a pistol and fire it, you can use your luck score divided by five. Oh. That's your stat. Actually, kid will never take damage from this edge. Oh, okay. Just so, it's, is that what it it does specifically say okay, that. That's what I'm touch of ice. Thank you. Because it does say it, if it does. Okay. So, all right. You're going to flip into the ring. Mm -hmm. Okay. You're going to start just walking down into walking the ring. Taking off my my clothes, basically. Okay. I'm going to fire my clothes on. Yeah. Uh, Gideon's going to take his trench coat, hold it up, hang it over a chair. I stand next to you, but I'm still standing next to you. I'm gonna make okay, all well, kinds of that one thing. I'll probably kind of whisper. <laughs> I'm gonna make all kinds of right, noises like I'm getting ready to whisper like, in this, like, this like moving parts right. around. <laughs> I know. You know, it's even more solid. You know. Okay. I so he you turn around. Yeah, and I'll turn around and start walking down. Yeah, I'll do a bow to him. Traditional bow. Yeah, I basically. He actually kind of gets up out of his chair and does the back, like very sort of ceremonial. Yeah. And he's like, "By the honor, if you want." And Gideon, when he takes his trench coat off and lays it over a chair, he's like, "Melee weapons." As long as it doesn't cause a final death. He looks at the vampire sitting there. He's like, "Hmm." Grabs his cane right out from his hand, just swipes it. <laughs> I'll bring it back. <laughs> he walks down into the ring like pap, pap. Was, was that his cane? Or? No, it was just yeah. some vampire who had like this. Okay. Ah, it's a cane with a wolf's head and a star. Right? So, that looks good. <laughs> so Gideon swipes it and I'll bring it back. So, uh, so everybody walking down into the ring, and how long do you guys want to go? How long do you think this is going to last? Mm, I don't know. We can... It's almost 9 o'clock. We can yeah. stop here and pick up next time. Probably the best stop here. i got to get up early, so... Okay. So we'll wait till Dennis gets down, and we'll discuss how he's going to approach his thing. <laughs> we'll probably resolve his thing, because it might deal with some of it. But you guys all walk into the ring, right? Yep. While he's the last one. And here he comes. Yeah. And you can hear the Wally Nader. Okay. <laughs> the Wally Nader. All right. So you're the last one walking down into the ring. And Adam looks at J Dog in his group. And he's like, Well, and they all kind of do that. Yeah, you got this. Getting all cocky. They start walking down as a group. And as they walk, <laughs> shrapnel. You're going to cause shrapnel. Okay. But so we'll resolve his thing because he's okay. going to use the magic spell shrapnel. As you were in the ring, he's behind you while he just turns around. Oh, so and we all went down. They were just you were all down in the ring yeah. while he was the last one down. He's like, "You better get in there." So they start following down while he turns around like a gunslinger. Boom, shrapnel to all of them, and I kick speed on. Okay. Well, that's already. Uh -huh. Speed is already. 
He got spent on humanity. Okay. No. No? I got a one on mine. Yeah, you do. It was a misprint. A misprint? You do have to spend one. But once you activate it, oh. it's for the scene. Okay, okay. so yeah. yeah. Same here. Okay. Uh, it's everything happens simultaneously on this, or is there a uh, initiative thing? No, you've got the drop on it, and nobody else is doing anything, so okay. this is going to be like a surprise attack. I'm seeing they, yeah. they don't expect they're like, okay, they right, expecting the start once they get down there. Yeah, they, yeah. well, I mean, they're Adam never just... said go, <laughs> it's not like wait for my signal. Okay, in fact, if you do this, I guarantee you, as soon as you do this, you hear Adam. Laugh and clap, <laughs> and everybody's like, "Yeah!" Like, yeah. It's all Before easy. all this happens, though, hold on just a second. So, as I start walking down from there, I'm gonna whoop around that, you know, like that musical. Oh instrument. yeah, the instrument. Yeah. Thirty-five. Okay. So basically, I'm playing kind of a dirge. Yeah, but it's kind of like he would recognize as a funerary song of okay. the dead. Yeah. But basically, he's playing that very solemnly as he comes down. And he eyes you, because you said, I think you were, did you say something earlier you were going to do something? <laughs> well, yeah. you did not, I wish you wouldn't jump into the ring before I did something. Right. So as I pass you, I basically finish my press note and push around and, like, crouch for my sword as you, as you do the trap. Yeah. So as I do that, it's a distraction as he, okay. Mm -hmm. Okay, so I cast fragment, and uh, that um, uh, causes all vertical objects within 20 feet of me to explode, bringing sharp chunks of material through the air, um, away from the flinger. Uh, and I'm the, the, being the flingy, uh, so I'm causing it uh, to go as a um, Part of a circle, effectively an arc, and it does 2d10 damage to anyone standing in the area of effect. Uh, targets with any amount of armor edge or targets or are under the effects of the deflection spell are not damaged. Uh, persons wearing partial armor may reduce the damage of the percentage of coverage. Uh, they have uh, the range is 20 feet, so I'm assuming that puts the J's in, in range. Uh, it's instantaneous, and uh, they have an escape roll uh, against their decks for half the damage. Okay. Two D ten. You have to roll that for each person, or just in general? That's um, general, I think. Okay. It does that to anyone in the area each of a person. person. Each person. Two D ten. Man. Well, that's not a whole lot. Uh, our spice rifle puts 118. Yeah, right. it's 76. Yeah. It's uh, 17. 17. 10 D10? Uh, two, two D10. Oh, 2 D10. I'm not yeah, that powerful. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Yeah. J Dog is atomized. <laughs> okay, let me see. But, uh, yeah, 17. 32. <laughs> Good start. Yeah. Your phone is down. Put it there. But again, yeah. I, I, I take on that. Leave, leave and please. The <laughs> narrowing of the yeah. eyes. All right. Roll again. Um. That's a. No, uh, does this uh, pop? No. Let me see. Okay. Um. That's a twelve. Okay, one more time. One more time. One more time. All right, 15. <laughs> 10 on each one of those. Nice. One of the dice at every time. Did it pop? No. <laughs> That's what I asked you. It's like dead I, I got a point of having a second of that. I've murdered the Olaf curse. <laughs> Right. They were all walking down in the groups. So you got a couple more rolls here. Uh, roll one more time. Um, that's a nine. 
Nein? Ja. Ja, nein. <laughs> yeah, I will be at you. Well, not to go there, didn't me? Uh, yeah, yeah, 13. One more? Careful, I'll read your buddy. A little slog and surprise. Uh, six. <clears throat> One more? Put on my board of words. Ew, 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 wow. Ew, ew, wow, wow. And that's 12. I see you got your case, Mike. Yes, I got the date. Oh, I'm sorry. One more. Ew, 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 Okay, so all right. So basically, that was the on the edge. They were all walking down as a group. J Dogs right out front, uh, followed by the two vampires, and then there's four werewolves, and then there's the white. Actually, the white is probably right behind J Dog. So J Dog, you hit him, and I will tell you what this is. The next time you plan ahead. He had 50 survival points because these are all kind of low level like punks. 50 survival points. And he's down to 33. And the two vampires, Mina and Lucy, started at 45. They are now down to 33 and 30. So, good hit. The four werewolves are 31. They started at 40. They're 31, 27, 34, and 28. So, you managed to hurt these guys pretty good. The only one you didn't hit was the white because you only did what, four points and he has 10 points of armor. Well, actually, and it says the armor stops it. Yeah. yeah so. so you didn't hit the white, but the others you did like shrapnel, and they're like, Jesus Christ. And the white's like, ding, ding. Oh, that was a low blow, man. <laughs> but as you shoot shrapnel, like turn around, just wing. Yeah, the whole crowd goes nuts. Like, oh, hell yeah. They even didn't even, they cheated. That's awesome. <laughs> So we'll stop there as you turn around and do your gun clear. Ah, let's do a round. Damn it. You can do one round if you want. Ah, let's wait. Oh, oh, wait, wait, wait. Yeah. yeah. So that's a good cliffhanger. Basically, tune in next week to see if we die or not. <laughs> Always a possibility. <laughs> but the cool thing is, there's no final death. So if you die, you'll be back tomorrow. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So that will have smoke. Thanks for joining us tonight. Yes, thank you guys. Make sure to check out our game three. Go to our three. Go to our YouTube. You'll see all these games that we do are posted on YouTube. You'll sit and watch hours and hours of the Rock and Tour Society Society break playing all kinds of different games. Yes. Uh, thank you again. On Obey, they have that. Yeah. Thank you again, veterans. This is yeah. Veteran Day week, so thank you again. Uh, and that, and else, anything else to say? What's up tonight? Yeah. How do you guys like that game? So I love it. Sure. All right. Thank you. Good. All right. Again, we're playing Nightlife. Check it out. Be safe. Bye. Bye. Bye.